And welcome everybody to Globusters. We're on to season number 11, episode number two, Sunset Behind. I'm your host, Jaron from Jaronism. Happy to be here. We've also got joining us, Zachary. Good times for all. Zach, how's it going? Hey, Jaron. We made it. The eclipse did not end the world this time. So rather, rather disappointed in that. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't. We're still here. Another eclipse, another day. Um, let's start out with something. I'm sure most people have seen this, but we'll just have you watch this while I fix something here, set it up. We'll be with you at one second, but enjoy this. Oh, no, not yet. Let me see here. What is going on? Uh, <laughs> the wrong screen. That's, of course, it. All right. One second. Let me fix this. So see, I have to fix the thing that I have to fix before I can fix the thing. This makes, it makes a lot of sense. Let's go with this one. Why does that look weird? All right. Well, it's going to have to work. So if you guys haven't seen this movie or uh, what are they called? Movie trailer. It's coming soon. Uh, July, I believe. And we will check it out here if I can get this thing on here. Looks like it's like extra widescreen. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. All right. See you in a second. We'll be right back. Hey, Joe. Hey, Nicole. Miss, you're on fire. It's very original. No, I do not want to stop, drop, and roll with you. No, your book is on fire. <gasps> oh, my God. Alcohol and flames. They like each other. <laughs> Cold days. Kelly Jones. Public support for the moon mission is rock bottom. Every day, something is breaking. And we're dead. Again. Or blowing up. The space program is a bloated mess. NASA needs a marketing specialist, and you are the very best. Excuse me? What are you doing? I tracked you down because I felt we had a connection. What? I'm joking. I work here now to sell the moon. NASA's not something that you sell with a jingle and a slogan. When I'm done, those men are going to be bigger than the Beatles. Who is that? For me, this is very personal. He's got my name. You told me that your guys don't do interviews, so I had to hire you guys. I'm here for the casting. Who's he? You. You're a juicy part. 60 missions in Korea. I flew 52 missions in Korea. I flew 52 missions in Korea. How's that? What? The whole world will be watching. We can't afford to lose to the Russians. We need to shoot backup version of the moon landing you mean to fake it no one can ever know what we're doing i cannot accept that they will shoot you what is my budget oh boy i know a lot more about the moon than i know about you give me go no go for launch if you fake this mission every single thing that we have sacrificed will have been for nothing you know you couldn't have made it to the sea without me. Four, three, two, one, and... My Armstrong is a whiny little bitch. We have to recast. I think we should have gotten good work. So... It says launches in July. Uh, let me just tell you real quick because I kind of have a, well, at least my prediction for how this movie will go. So the number one thing it will do, it's a comedy, supposedly. And the number one thing it will do, in my opinion, is it will try to make it look like the faking of the moon landing would be incredibly difficult. And by that, they will mm -hmm. make it so that they, number one thing, they'll tell a whole bunch of people. So there'll be a whole bunch of people in NASA that know. Of course, that would be uh, a good way to get your... Secret spoiled. The other thing it will show is that the astronauts didn't want to fake it, that they would, you know, basically threaten to uh, tell or, or something. It's going to be kind of like that. They'll make it seem like there's all kinds of issues with the faking of it. They tried doing wires. They tried doing this, but the wires broke. The cameras didn't work. You know, it'll just be this overwhelming, like, uh, it's impossible to fake kind of idea. And I think that's the way they'll go with it. And then in the end, they'll go to the moon. So I think that uh, by the end of the movie, they will have figured it out and then they'll send the men to the moon. And that's kind of the way the movie will go. So that's my guess of how it will be. It'll make it seem like it just a very, very difficult thing. And then at the same time, uh, kind of laugh at us, right? <laughs> it's going to kind of be a little kick in the pants. Um, 
to kind of show us, hey, this, you know, they, they like to laugh at us, basically. That's what I think they're doing with this one. But uh, it is still good news that – because, I mean, if, if – think back. I think it was Bob who said it, too. Bob was always wondering why there was no movie made like this. I, mean, you know, I remember Bob asking – uh, why there was no, and maybe it was also Mark Sargent and his clues said that there was no moon movie. And then of course, when he says that, then comes out first man and comes out this one. And so it's just uh funny that they would even let this get by unless it contained some sort of a uh, hidden agendic piece in there. What do you think, Zach? Yeah, it's, is any of this based on supposed to be like based on a true story? I I doubt that like the faking the moon landing part, but I'm really interested to see if the, uh, like her, her I don't think character. so. I mean, NASA's got the number one PR company. You know, they, they said before, like I've, I've read before about different PR agents that did work for them. So maybe it's a true story about one of them, but you know, that basically they tried to make the astronauts look wholesome. They, they basically were a propaganda machine, you know, more than anything. And, I wonder if I can find that. There's one video. This one video I made a while back with this guy, and he was talking about the NASA program, and he basically said that yeah, it's just a big PR firm that uh, basically can get away with things like what are they called? Uh, press releases, right? Which again, the, the problem with that is if you can just put out a press release, you could literally say anything, and nobody even questions you. So you could just put out a press release. NASA found water on Mars, and then that would be the news story that would go to every news company, and they would all put it out there even though nobody would double check that. Nobody even needs to. It's a press release. It's like, um, so they have the ability to do that. So they're like a big PR firm, but I see what you're saying. Maybe it's a true story about one of those people. Well, I'm thinking about like the scientist, how he was like, Hey, that's not me. That guy's got my name. Like you're oh. a government scientist. If right. That's a good point. They I tell you to go here and do an interview. You do an interview. Yeah. It's a know? good point. I didn't think about that. Hiring an actor to play, the scientist, I, I'm wondering if they actually did that because that's very deceptive. Yeah, if they had somebody who's not the real person or astronaut that's not the real astronaut, I think it'd be a little bit, a uh, little bit. I'm just looking at this is there. I just saw their Twitter channel, just seeing if there's anything else there beyond. It's certainly funny because you know what people are going to say about it. So that's the weird thing about it is that it plays right into the hands of truthers. And then, um, you know, I guess like I always make fun of Globers for believing in a movie, right? I always say, uh, oh, yeah, you guys bought into the behind the curve. So this is like their chance to say to us, oh, you guys just believe that movie, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Even though we've been saying it for for 10 years. So um, I'm just trying to see if there's sneaking up space in the eclipse. Uh, Yeah, it's hard to believe that they would let that movie come out. Uh, it's quite the fictional take. So it does say fictional take on the 1969. So it's not supposed to be no, no truth. David, according to this. Sorry, David's asking over on Rockfin if there's no YouTube feed. What? We're on YouTube. Are we yes, not? there is. Hold well, on, let me check. Uh, pop out. Chat. Yeah. Yeah, people are chatting. Hello, everybody yeah, in chat. It was, it looked good. Let's say who's over there. Say hello to some people. I see Stephanie in the house. Stephanie, what's up? Thank you for being here. KK Westbury says, looks pretty dumb making a PR team look smarter than the astronauts. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> totally. <laughs> KK Westbury says, they're going to say that's just a movie, of course. Um, Dylan Heron says, bunch of inverts acting out an inversion. Right. Uh, and I'll tell you something about that, too, because I've seen a lot of people questioning this eclipse, and we'll get into that. But I've been, I, I don't know, you know, go back and, you know, Bob will hear me say it. Bob heard me say it for probably the last seven years that I've said that the moon is behind the sun and I've got laughed at a million times, but now, you know, really think about it, that they invert everything. So if they tell us this moon is closer than the sun, why, why isn't it further? You tell me. Um, because again, some of the eclipse stuff, we'll get into that. It kind of can look like if you place it behind there and think of a source sun, then a moon, then a sun, everything starts making sense. Why can't you see the moon for two or three days after new moon? Because it's still behind the sun. No sun is hitting it. When it kind of peaks out around from behind the sun, you see it two or three days later, whatever that is. But again, I say that and people go crazy because people like what they're taught. Uh, Dave is high. That's probably true. Cammy, they're very good. Uh, Chris Rowan says, what's up all? Five by on YouTube. Thank you very much, Vaughn. Z Katcha says, hi, from Ontario. Uh, Jason Best says, NASA will still be kicking the can down the road, 2024, 25, 26. Oh, that's already known. You can actually add 27, 28. I mean, I've heard... Now that they've moved the moon missions back to 2028 or 29, 
You've got Dear Moon that was told us all that they would be going to the moon in 2023. You've got Elon Musk who said he was going to send people to the moon in 2018. You've got Richard Branson said he was going to put hotels in space in 2014. And you can go back and back and back from there. It's just all garbage. Um, Dirt found it, thank goodness. And he means his, <laughs> his bowl of weed. Uh, thank you, Miss Tribune, for being here. She says, listening while I clean the house. Much love. Dylan Heron says, bingo. Daryl Davis in the house. Daryl, my good buddy. Uh, got a lot of flat earth farms out there. Uh, he says, get your Rogans up. Uh, we've got Benny Boy in the house. Have you been snorting your blue dot sauce again? <laughs> what is blue dot sauce? <laughs> um, we got XRP Hitman says, Moon is always 55 minutes late to the party every day. I believe it's 50 minutes, but okay. Uh, we've got Dylan. They're so scared. Yes, Jaren makes sense. Actual sun, then moon, then apparent sun. Correct. That's kind of what I've been saying for a long time. But, and again, I think that the ancient... Is it the Vedics? I believe the Vedics say the moon is further than the sun. Um, Jessica, is, okay. Dave Hinkle says, so there's still people that think they live on a spinning ball in literally nothing. Yeah, literally nothing, Dave. That's the funny thing about it. Literally nothing, <laughs> which is just insane that they uh, believe that the earth just spins unimpeded in nothingness, which is just amazing. Jonathan Kampal in the house says, yo, yo. Post says, that's XRP for you. Stephanie is making the best pizza ever over here. Nice. Cowabunga Joe. Does Jaren still have Bitcoin? Of course. Aisling says, they don't make it easy to find dearth. No, they don't make it easy to find any of us, to be honest with you. We've got WT. I love Magic Mike. Let's do a road trip and pop some Molly. All righty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is an idea that I have, uh, and we'll see if people are interested in this. But I did the math on it. I just looked up. Real quickly, how many theaters there were in the United States? And there's something like 5,500 theaters. And then I thought about like opening weekend that there would probably be about nine showings, right? If you talk about like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, that's just three each. But I think it would actually be much more than that. But let's just say nine. So if Is we, that it? That there's only that many theaters left? Yeah, 5,500. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. So if we go 5,500 times the nine showings and then multiply that by the – I think the average people – oops, you can get a little better start of this. The average people at a movie theater is – hold on. Let me see why this is not showing. There we go. Uh, the average people at a movie theater is like 220, I think is what they say. So 49,500 times the 220 people in each theater is going to be uh, about 11 million. So an idea would be – and I can create this if people want uh, – to create a PDF that's just a one sheet that can either be trifolded or something that can easily be printed at people's houses or they can go to Staples and print – you know, 220 of them for very cheap on just regular paper. And they'll just basically say, hey, you've been lied to. We've all been lied to. Um, don't go looking on YouTube. Don't search for NASA Truth or Flat Earth or anything like that on YouTube because they've already blocked all the real videos. You need to download this app, maybe put a QR code for Dave's app, or check out these channels and then list 20, 25, 30 channels and their URLs, maybe even put a QR code on each one. And if we had just uh, our little, you know, soldiers out in the streets who basically, if you're going to go see this movie, I know I'm going to go see it. So I'll just take it upon myself on the day I go to the show to get there a little bit early and try and drop one of those little flyers on every seat in the theater, before, you know, get there early enough to do that. Now, so nice. that we could do, or we could even uh, populate the entire parking lot during the movie. So, you know, you'd be hitting people with who were at, you'd actually, you know, maybe print 500 for that as you probably would have a lot more. Well, you wouldn't have... Yeah, that's actually better because people who came in the same car would only have one then rather than have one for each seat. Probably better to do it on the cars. Anyway, um, might you get kicked out? Might you get told to stop that? Yeah, sure. But think about if we were able to hit 11 million people in a weekend with some flat yeah, As long as you don't destroy someone's property, all they can do is make you leave the property. Yeah, so I that's figured your that that's – Right, and that's they're not going to arrest you or anything like that. They might tell you leave and, and just don't do it anymore. I'm not telling you to, to disobey them. If uh, – but I think that, you know, let's say we reach half those people. I mean, that's when's the last time we've had a chance to get flat earth information in, f in the five million people's faces over the weekend. And it's people who went to the movie. They're going to, you know, maybe some people are um, interested in it, you know, interested in that topic. So I think after seeing the movie, they'll probably have their minds opened a little bit to these possibilities. And as long, I mean, even if the movie makes it seem like it's very difficult to fake, I'm sure people are smart enough to go, I don't know if it would have been that difficult to fake, right? You could be like Bill Nye who says that it would have been more expensive to fake it than to actually go because of all the paperwork. 
because that it's makes just a lot of so sense. So stupid. <laughs> Makes no sense at all. Like you're gonna do the paperwork if you go, so wouldn't that <laughs> right, still have same. that cost to it? It's the same thing, regardless. Idiots, yeah, idiots. It's just dumb, Bill. It's just dumb. Yeah, and Neil deGrasse Tyson says, "Well, the tank was full with enough gas to go to the moon. So where do you think they went to the tiddly winking leaks or something? Whatever he says. It's like no, we're saying that they faked it, so they probably didn't put all that fuel in there, Neil. Can you <laughs> not think your way out of a paper bag? It's the question. So." I think that it's highly possible to fake. I think it's very easy to fake. I think that uh, with the technology uh, back then, maybe people have questions about it, but I brought up that document. Maybe I can show it real quick. Just a document that shows, let me find it if I can. It would be in the Jaronism links. All the links I talk about in my shows are at t.me slash Jaronism links, just so you know. Oops, can't just type in links. It doesn't work. Um, and, you know, Bob's Wins is on there. I'm just looking at some of the things that have been uh, free, uh, Feynman's lectures. I saw somebody the other day asking about where does Feynman say that the uh, volts go up 100 per meter. And uh, that's mm -hmm. in his uh, page, uh, chapter nine of his lectures. So that's also linked to my t.me slash journalism links. And let me see if we can find, I'm pretty sure it's, I also have the full, I don't know if anybody's ever seen the full video of the guy who says that the moon is plasma. Uh, there's his actual full interview that that was just a little sip, snippet of it. How long is this? No, I've only ever seen a snippet. Oh yeah. So I'll, I'll put this link in the, uh, YouTube chat right now. If anybody wants to see it, I believe this is a full, oops, there, oops, that didn't work. Hold on a second. Oh, nice. Bernie in chat says he used to go to Walmart and open up websites on all the display laptops nice. to rent to people. <laughs> yeah. That's a great idea. There you go. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that I think I don't know how long the full video is. Let me see if I just look it up real quick. Bring this up. The turn off my phone from beeping at me. Uh, the full video is nine minutes and thirty three seconds. Um, nineteen sixty five scientist claims the moon is plasma. So there's that. Uh, I'm just trying to tell you some things if you want to go find them there. We've also got oh the Walter Bislin um personal celestial sphere, the basically your pad, your personal atmosphere dome, information there. Got uh, some good stuff here. Let me find, though. Some sun fade-out stuff. Gotta love that. We've got, uh, the you know, the planes rec breaking records and speeds over 800 miles per hour. Oh, boy. Great article here. Ten ways you know the Earth is round. I'm sure that's fantastic. Here it is. The structure <laughs> of the... Wait, is this one? Structure of the stream core... Now, I forgot what I was looking up. Hold on. No, no, no. That's not it. We're looking for the moon paper. Uh, we've got, let's find it here. Full video. No, nope, not that one. Come on. I got it. Did you one. see any of the eclipse out there? Were you? Yeah, it was about half rest, but I mean, I literally took my phone out. I mean, took my camera out, set it up, set up the tripod. It started. I had a clear view of it. It was in uh, infrared. I watched it for maybe five minutes and I've never been more bored in my life. So I was like, okay, I'm not even. <laughs> I was so bored. I was like, let me go watch paint dry. I think it may be a little bit more exciting for me. Um, yeah. Go ahead. I bet the uh, total would be pretty awesome to see. I still yeah. haven't seen one of those. I still haven't seen that either, no. But that would be something I'd be like, wow, okay, that's cool. But yeah, same here. I mean, without the filters and stuff, it just kind of looked like the sun, like there was something kind of up there, but you really, it still was too bright to see anything of course yeah we'll talk I about it because like I do 85 think, percent i do kind of agree with one complaint about it and the fact that we seem to see like the sun the edge of the sun through the moon you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. yeah and we'll kind of show some images i've seen some people have shown some pretty good images of that what they think it should look like uh lunar ranging experiments i mean i've got links to that i always get people asking me where did you get that 19 because it's in 1961 or 62 Whatever it was. Oh, this might be it here. Let me see. Is that when they first started bouncing the lasers off of yeah, it? Yeah, MIT started doing that. Oh, this is the Bill Allegedly. Kasich book. Right. <laughs> this is the Bill Kasich book, uh, How They Fake the Moon Landing, or what is it called? It's called, um, I forgot the name of it. We never went to the moon. There we go. I'm trying to find the document that shows that they had CGI imagery in 19, uh, early 1960s. Because there's many people who say that there's, if you try and say that it was CGI, any part of the moon landings, they'll say, you idiot, CGI wasn't invented till after that. So luckily we have a document that shows that they are wrong. Of course, that's not part of real history because they don't want you to know that. Uh, let me find it though. 
Which one of these is it? Rich Planet. What is that? Uh, NSSS. I don't know what this one is either. Bill Kasich's book. That's documents. Rich Planet. I don't know what Rich Planet. Oh, here it is. CIA reading room. This is it right here. All right. Let me bring this document over here to show you. So this is a CIA document. Let me go over here. There we go. This is uh, published in uh, Russia, I believe. So you'll see here we're talking about uh, about the visit from the USS in the USSR of a group of American CINA specialists. So uh, this was declassified in 2013. Basically says that from the 20th of October of the 11th of November to the November, 11th of November 1963, a group of distinguished American cinema specialists visited the USSR. They visited our country as a reciprocal visit in conformity with the agreement about cultural exchanges. Talks about them going there. Talks about uh, during the stay in the Soviet Union, the group visited in Moscow. Gives a bunch of lists of those things. Keep going down here and we'll find uh, among equipment which drew attention, the new camera, Mir, with Mir shutter, which is considerably lighter than the Mitchell by more than 20 kilograms. The line of cameras for wide format exposures, the series of camera lenses, light filters, combination photography by the traveling map method infrared screen and camera TKS. Okay, hold on. So this is what we're looking for here. What is a combination photography by the traveling map method? So we're just going to go here. We're going to go combination. Oops, combination photography. That's what I love about you, Jaron. You go and find <laughs> it. You like, dude, you're great at researching. By the you taught me method. so much on how to research stuff. Thank you. Uh, so let's see here. The rank traveling mat method enabled separate foreground and background shots to be combined both in color and in black and white and was acknowledged to be superior to rival American processes. The traveling mat method process was widely used in filmmaking and was an important technique in special effects. So what it is, is green screen. <laughs> That's, look up mat filmmaking and you'll see here it is a green screening. So they knew about green screen. What year was the date on that document again? Uh, 1964. So you're talking five years before the moon landings. They knew how to do green screening. And this is not known. If you look up green screening, they're going to say that, you know, that it came around later. Um, and see here, mats are used in photography and special effects filmmaking to combine two or more image elements into a single final image. Usually mats are used to combine a foreground image, which many of us have talked about, the guys on the ground digging around on the moon, and then uh, with a background image, the scenic mountains and things like that. Um in this case, the mat is the background painting. In film and stage, mats can be physically huge sections of painted canvas portraying large scenic expanses and landscapes. In film, the principle of mat requires masking certain areas of the film emulsion to selectively control which areas are exposed. So let's see what it says about history, actually. I would like to see this real quick. And uh, wasn't it Kubrick that figured out if you don't make a sharp thing right there, you can make it look like it goes on forever almost? He actually like curved... Yeah, I think that's called the like a, a, what do they call it? Um, that's not rear screen projection. Is that what you're talking about? Or is it still the man? No, method? I'm talking about like where you take the background, the landscape background, and then the foreground part, like the ground, and there's no like finite line there. You don't need like mountains in front of it. They oh, just gotcha. curve it. Oh, gotcha. And so it looks like it's flat. Yeah, it's. So it does look like, I mean, they're, they're not hiding it here in this document because it says here, computers began to aid the process late in the 20th century. In the 1960s, Pedros, whatever his name is, refined the use of motion control cameras and blue screen and received an Academy Award for the process. 1980s saw the invention of the first digital mats and blue screening process, as well as the invention of the first computerized nonlinear editing systems for video. But again, we are learning that they were doing this back in the early 60s. Um, and then if you talk about a... What did they say the other word was? They said, um, whoops, let me go back down here. There was a tr TKS, which is called uh, the timekeeping system. Okay, so we're looking up infrared infrared screen and camera TKS. Just look up that real quick. Infrared screen and camera TKS. Oh, that's great. Just spilled my water. Uh oh And luckily it didn't hit my keyboard or anything, and we'll soak it up with the electrical bill. There you go. All right. <laughs> uh, so this is FLIR Scout Pocket. So let me see if we see anything in images that looks familiar to what they're talking about. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm not really sure what this is, but a camera TKS is a timekeeping time system so that you can be on the spot with things that need to be done at a certain time or whatever. 
Uh, I don't really see how infrared has anything to do with it. But that is basically them admitting, you know, the CIA document admitting that these things were done way before we think. Um, and I think it talks about it a little bit later in here. But anyway, this document's also in that uh, t.me slash journalism links. And I just want to show people one example, if I can find it real quick. I want to look at showing you why uh, I can tell for sure that the... Uh, I don't believe it. I did it again. Oh, twice, twice, right there. On my my microphone's blocking my view of it, and I just keep knocking it over. All right, so I'm gonna look up. Uh, I believe it's if we go to the uh, what is it called, the lunar rover, and I believe it is the Apollo 14. Is Apollo 14 the first one that did the rover? I think so. Let's see. And if you find that. Uh, maybe it's 15. Let me look up 15. So when you see them driving around, and I've pointed this out before, that you can see the mountains in the background, and they never change the perspective. Yeah, this one right here. Let me see. Follows its tracks home. I'm going to bring this over here for you to watch it. Hopefully you guys are seeing that. Let me get you yeah, on the right screen. Okay, so let me see if we can find this one. Yeah, so let me show you this here. Okay. So just looking at this, for example, here, okay, you can look back here and you can see that there's this like white little mountain here and then a darker version of it here. Now, if this were a real scene, as you drive towards this, you're going to expose more of this white mountain. That's just the way things go. Um, you, you start and we'll see as you watch, you're going to notice that you never expose more of the white mountain, that this is a backdrop. This is not in any way real. You'll notice that it basically stays the same always. It is never, you never get closer to anything. You can see that it's just, this is a backdrop. Yeah, uh, parallax doesn't work that way. No. So you can't, you'll never get around that corner. You'll never get around this corner. You'll never ever see more of that white mountain because it's fake. It's a screen. It's a, or a, sorry, a canvas. Could be a big black sheet with the mountain on it. Um, but you can never get around that corner. You just can't. Um, Let's go, I'm just reading. See how it's kind of distorted right there along the base of the mountain? Like in the, oops, I paused at the wrong time. I'm looking at the wrong screen here. There we go. Okay. Oh, you can't really see very as high as I can. Let me lower this down a little bit. Go up a little bit. Okay. Let's move it there. Where are you talking about? You're talking about like down here? Yeah. Yeah. Like right near the base of the mountain. It just looks like here. Like looks it looks like, like faded. Yeah. Faded. Perfect word, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like any of these mountains that you see back here, like they, you, you won't get like close to them. They just stay in like the same spot forever. And you can even like track their size. They don't change size. And I've done it before where I've taken a screenshot of these mountains at their inception, like where you see them at the beginning. And then you can keep going. And I think it's this one, though, that, that we already stopped seeing that other mountain. Let me go back a little bit. This might not be the right, the full video. This is like only three minutes. But uh, right when they start, okay, so right here, if we took a screenshot right now of this mountain and then we kind of let it go and you see how we can just keep going and we can keep going, it will never change at all, which it should be getting bigger. It's how everything works. But then you kind of see it swings to the right and now you get this, where again, if we took a screenshot of this, you're going to basically see that it never changes. See that? It's just going to stay. It's going to stay. It's going to stay. Well, that's just not how things work. Now, does the does the moon believers have some comeback to it? I'm sure they would just say, oh, it's further away than you think. Oh, there's no atmosphere. Things don't look like they do on Earth. You don't understand physics, you know, the whole 10 yards that they normally do. Um, let me see if we can get one more. There's actually the uh, fuller video of the rover. Let me see if we can find it. Lunar rover. I don't care what Apollo it is. Maybe we'll go Apollo 17. I don't. Oh, and by the way, this is another thing. Like Apollo 17 which had like a bunch of, for some reason they didn't, oh, let me see, here's one, part two, broadcast from the rover. It's like it was much, much different. So they stopped doing the kind of drive around and watch these guys in the rover footage. Well, it might be because they didn't want to expose the idea of what they were doing, right? So if we're onto it, like we are now, if somebody was onto it then, well, they would just eliminate the driving because the driving was the part that was easy to tell. Because if you're driving, you're moving towards something, it's going to get bigger, it's going to get, you're going to see more or less of an item, you're going to reveal more. Uh, that's just how parallax works. But um, it seems like every time in Apollo 17, they would take video when they get 
off the rover. So here they stop somewhere, and then they do this, and then they're, that's like the NASA camera zooming in. Then they kind of pack the rover, and then the next thing you know, they're at the next spot. So it's like they stopped filming the actual driving, which um, to me is is quite indicative. I mean, this is just like obvious. This could be where was that video right there that showed the backdrop? I just saw it. So, you know, how big and of a... who's taking the video of the two of them? Is that the video from the rover? Yeah, and supposedly it's being controlled by NASA. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. They have remote control and can control that, but we can't do it now. It'd be too hard to put a moon on, I mean, a camera on the moon. Can't do that. But, I mean, this is, like, very obvious when they've got... This is a very short scene somewhere, and then they've got the backdrop, which is... Uh, just looks completely obvious. Um but I guess, let me look up one more time. Apollo 15. I don't think it was, wait, was it 14? Maybe 14 was the first. So that's when we just watched. I want to try and find, there's one that's like a longer rovers reach the moon. Um, rover, have you ever watched the rover deployment? Mm -mm. Oh, this is one of the funnier things you've ever seen. This is it coming out of the thing. Look at <laughs> And it like blows up like an inflatable. It's so funny. <laughs> look at these guys are trying to get this down. They're like cranking it down. It's like unfolding out of the bottom of this thing, which is crazy. It's just, that's where the engine was, yet they're unfolding it. But like when it finally comes down, it like unfolds. Let's see if I can find that part. It's hilarious. Again, you can't really see the whole thing. I wonder why. Oh, because I shaped it for the widescreen. That's why I want to give this back down. There. Yeah, I'm there. seeing it over on the Rockfin feed. That's yeah, a little better. Um, let's see, where is the. I mean, it's just such the worst camera footage ever. And, you know, you're looking at it, it makes you think that that's the way things were in the 1960s, 1970s. Then you go look at something else that's live from, it's like, what? Everything else yeah, is why fine. why is, like, the Wizard of Oz, you can see everything perfect, and that's 1935. <laughs> right. It's, like, insane. It's like, oh, because I guess you were sending it back through an umbrella uh, satellite dish. Maybe that's why it got... Uh, but it's, I've seen a lot of people say there's no video of them deploying it, but there is. It's just terrible. I mean, I wanted to see when it unfolds. Like, one of the wheels pops out like it's uh, inflatable. Let's see what they're doing here. So they can't they can't keep a 24-7 feed on the ISS 250 miles away, but they can control a camera on the moon. Yeah, 250 miles is a long way, though. Think about it. It's like really far. <laughs> You got to have at least a big delay in your audio communications at twenty, you know, that far. So eleven seconds, you know, sometimes <laughs> eleven <laughs> seconds, eleven seconds, or twenty. I don't have an eleven second delay when I call LA. I wonder why. <laughs> um, but yeah, the thing comes out. It cannot be the same car that's driving around. <laughs> it just cannot be. It like unfolds, and like the wheels pop over. It's like a a child's toy, and then all of a sudden it's driving around in a. It's basically a Willy's Jeep. That's the frame that they use. Have you seen that? The One of the funnier memes I've ever seen is the little kid. He's got a funny face, and it shows the Willie's Jeep body, which is $500, next to the Lunar Rover, which was $38 million. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're literally identical. And then, even funnier, I, I, I've made fun of it before that people say that there's lawn chairs that they used. It looks like lawn chairs. It literally looks like lawn chairs. Until it I read, does, yeah. Until I read not NASA. even good lawn chairs, like no. the old 1980s lawn chairs. No, but then I read this thing that says NASA, because they couldn't figure out how to fit it on here, that the miracle was using lawn chairs. <laughs> because it was able to be folded, because lawn chairs can be folded. So, I mean, this is just terrible. Uh, really, really bad. Uh, let me see if we're going to go one back and see if we can find this. Oh wait, this is oh wait, this is a little clear. Oh, a little fast motion. Look at this. So they pull this little rope down. Look at the <laughs> oh tires. You see the tires pop out? Watch this. Where did the tires pop out from? <laughs> Where did those tires come from? <laughs> They're like Blink. bigger than the hatch. I mean, this is not. Oh, and pop it out, and <laughs> good to go. <laughs> that was it. Oh, fast motion. I guess. Funny. Funny, funny. But yeah, this thing is just a, it's a, uh, basically a, a, what is it called? Willie's Jeep frame. I mean, I gotta get the exact layout of how they did this. Let's see if we can find it. The takeoff films are some of the funniest things ever. I mean, I don't know how anybody, like, how does anybody believe this? It's hilarious. Let's see here. Oh, do we have any sound? What do you got here? I mean, this is just okay, so funny to me. Uh, challenges at two minutes and. 
And you notice that none of them are worried at all. And this thing has never been tested. Granted, they supposedly <laughs> went the other times, but let's even go to Apollo 11. They're leaving in the same craft that they just came in. Like something we can't do today. We don't, Elon Musk doesn't even put people in the craft that he tries to land. But imagine that that goes up, comes down and lands, and then takes off again. Uh, it's just insane that we would believe that this is... Never landed once. Exploded three weeks before takeoff. <laughs> there you go, right. 367. You want to pick up the camera just before I hit a board stage. Right, are we going to go? Oh, we got to erase the air. Yeah, they've Stop never the even overhead. been to the moon. <laughs> right? <laughs> the average D, 20 seconds. All right, let's go. Ah, shoot. Okay, hey, let's get off. Forget the camera. Hey, Ten seconds. Seconds. Forget the camera, let's just go. Board Board stage. Stage. Forget Board. the camera. Engine arm is out Okay, I'm going to get the pro. 99, proceeded. 3, 2, 1. Ignition. <laughs> Run away, Houston. Run away, Houston. That's your good. And the thing that people forget is there's no chairs in this craft. They're, they're both standing. And this craft tips over in a second. It's like, what were they doing? Laying on each other's laps? <laughs> pitch over. So now it's I pitched over. This is my favorite part here when it starts going down. Watch this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. 30 seconds. 308, your number. Okay, coming through 1,500 feet. And H dot looks good. Roger, uh, we've lost data right now, but uh, we'll... We'd like half You're telling me with all the delay and everything, they controlled it yeah. that much. I've never seen them control it that much. I just saw it, like, pan up a little bit. I didn't know it goes over and up and over. And look at it. It's still finding it. Get out of here. Yeah, they could have never done that. Even if it's, what is it, like a two and a half second... Delay, supposedly. That's just. Uh, did they lose it? I didn't put this there, by the way. That's there. Maybe get Tom back. Hello, Houston. How do you read? <laughs> Roger, John here. You're loud and clear, and both systems okay. work good. You're right okay. Okay. Should be about 145. Yeah. Who knows where that thing went? No, I'm Houston, we're in the blind, and we're go. Roger. We'd like the eggs to auto. Okay. <laughs> I got good luck. Challenger, Challenger Houston, you're go, go at. Two. Challenger Houston, how do you copy? So, yes, yeah, so that little craft took off from the top of this. I mean, it's just insane. Uh, again, believe what you would like to. Let's see. This is a 60-minute uh, in 60 frames per second. I believe this is the one we just watched or no? Go down sort of slow here, Joe. Just to make sure we... Uh... No, but if yeah, you... Yeah, we watched some of this, I think. Is this the one we watched? Uh, yeah, I think you're right. But, again, and I've taken the screenshot of this mountain, and then you can go further when it's this mountain's the same thing, and you keep going, and this mountain... It's the same thing. Notice even right there. Watch this. So go from there, and then this is actually them driving and driving and driving. And now watch when I click here. That's not any bigger. It's not any different. And you can kind of watch. Let me turn this down. I've shown before. Watch these things that they're driving over. They're driving over some of the largest boulders that you've ever seen. They have no care in the world for what's in front of them. They don't inflect their voice change. There's no sound of bouncing. Uh, they're just mowing through rock fields with no ch and these are metal tires these are not inflatable tires these are not they're supposedly metal like linked metal tires you would be all over the place all over the place i mean do they have one of those gyro stick things for this what are those called you know you stick your phone in there and it keeps it nice and steady because right. <laughs> yeah that's insane this thing should be i mean there's no like the left edge lifting up the right edge lifting up like no. you said they're hitting boulders it kind of bounces like a little bit like you know that see it's going up and then down but look at there look at that rock they just drove over like it was nothing All right i mean go back a little bit you can actually see them take look at these rocks right here these two they're going to go right over them look at that's right over them and I mean, again, it's like they're not even trying to steer around it. They're, they're, this rock's gone. There's bigger ones if you keep watching this footage. But again, watch this little mountain back here. And if I kind of move forward and click, you'll notice that it doesn't change. Okay. Now, and are those the tracks that are already there from they came, another rover? No, they came this way and then they're going back, supposedly. Okay. But again, I've seen the, the, <laughs> I've seen the chart that shows where they're at. And they basically just do a circle because they can't actually go anywhere else. They'd have to show a different backdrop. So they basically just drive in a big circle so that you just can use the same backdrop. It's like so cut and dry that it's faked. Um, yet, you know, people want to believe what they want to believe. They're not going to uh, see 
what they don't want to see, unfortunately. Um, oh, look at our original Moonstone, 3.4 billion years old. We date rocks. So very impressive that we can do that. Um, I don't see anything else here that looks like the one I'm looking for. But uh, yeah, there's some longer one. And then there's the one that shows, I think it's Apollo 16. Let me look up 16. There's the one that shows that they, this like r debris field that hits them. Uh, maybe it's this one here. Let me see. Uh, it's five minutes, 41 seconds. I've got it on my computer. I could find it later. But, oh, it actually looked like maybe it was there. But in one of these videos, all of a sudden, all these rocks start raining down on the cart. They don't even mention it. There's just tons of debris somehow falling on them, and they don't get it. But look at these rocks are <laughs> flying over. Look at this. And, like, these are not pebbles. These are rocks. You, you can't, If anybody's ever been in a go-kart, and because you're so low to the oh, ground. Oh, it's horrible. It, like, beats oh. your body up. Oh, it's terrible. You feel everything. You run over a pebble, you almost lose it. Look at this. Look at this. This one's like actually here. doing a little bit better right here. Look at this. Up and down. Up and down. Yeah, but now let's listen to their voice. And you tell me if their voice... If I jump up and down on my seat right now, you can tell that I'm jumping up and down. I'm making lots of different, mm -hmm. you know, you don't. Yeah, when you brought this up, it, it didn't dawn on me until you brought it up. And it's, yeah. I feel like we're climbing, one. but we've been climbing for quite a while here. I just looked at the pitch meter, and it was pegged out a minute ago. Wow. We got a, we're climbing up about a 10-degree slope now. Okay. Okay. And I... And uh, let's see, 6 was at uh, zero, zero, zero at... Uh, yeah, each one of those little jerks, you know. Yeah, and they, well, look, look at that jump. Okay, see that one? It's sort of a funny shape. Looks like it's got a breach in the southeast side at 12 o'clock. Yeah. Look at how that thing's driving. The one at 12 o'clock, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you shake it just a little bit. You can tell that I'm moving when I do that. Yeah. Stone, uh, I mean, up Stone Mountain, my assessment is it's not any worse than what we've been driving down. I think this is one of our benches here, John. I think it is. Yeah, we're at 3 These rocks are driving over. Five should be at 3 3. And, uh, okay, Tony, we're on a flat area now. Look at that jump. Uh, on a flat area. On a flat B. And, just uh, okay, Tony, we're on a flat area now. <laughs> at uh, 355 at 3.3. And, uh, and I think, uh, it's, it apparently is a bench. Uh, it's uh, about we're passing the station. It's a good point. <laughs> Did he K say it's a bitch? KK Westbury says they sound pretty happy driving in a diaper. You have to remember that. They've got shit in their diapers right now. <laughs> five, a little to the east. Okay, Look at this rock field. There. That's great. We'll just go right over it. No big deal. <laughs> uh, I tell you, it's just as blocky here. The block population is up again to about 40. I think the umbrella s satellite dish is what keeps them from sounding uh, like this. It helps them a lot of different ways. You guys don't understand. 50 percent. Okay, you might look for a fresh crater that would punch through that ray material in the, Kayla, or in the Descartes for a station five when you come back. Yeah, we got lots of... Cr okay, most of the craters here are... Uh, there's another split one, but... Look at old South Ray, Charlie. That's beautiful. Just spectacular. It's just spectacular. It. Look at these rocks. <laughs> Whoa! And there's, uh, there's Baby Ray, John. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it. It's got black sides to it. God, these guys sound like such a joke. So what happens if they get it stuck and they're real far from the thing? We don't talk about that. <laughs> I mean, what kind of, <laughs> yeah, I mean, do they have enough oxygen to run back from the furthest point if need be or whatnot? Well, you'll notice, too, look at this. I mean, I'm just noticing now. I've never really thought about it. So Apollo 16 now, all of a sudden, there's no mountains in the distance. Now they're driving towards an empty hill. So you can no longer use what I was using for Apollo 14, or what did I say, 15 before, where they had this hill in the background that never revealed more of itself. Um, I mean, these are just ridiculous. Now, I've seen people talk about how they did it. Um, I don't have the video off the top, uh, and I don't know where it's at right off the bat, but... They've shown before, if you take a little tiny car and you put it on like a little platform, then you can move the screen towards them. So basically, it's the car's not actually moving. And you could have it on like a, uh, I don't know what you would call it, like a gimbal kind of deal where the, the car looks like it's moving because it's bouncing left and right. And it doesn't really coincide with the ground at all. But somebody could, somebody could watch the screen as it's coming towards them and move, maneuver it to kind of look like it's doing it. And then you would have guys in a studio speaking. Like 4.0. Okay, okay, come on. Go, 
Let's watch this again. Look at this rock. This thing goes towards. Okay, watch these rocks. That's a boulder. Look at the boulder. Something like 4.0. <laughs> Look at this. Okay. Right over the top of it. Oh, you guys can't see. Gosh darn it. Hold on one second. Why didn't you guys see that? Where's This is way too low. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm going to lower this down. I don't know why this. Oh, again, yeah, NASA, this is all recorded in like the big square format. That's why it's not seen. All right, let's go there. Now you can see it. Is that the bottom? Yeah. Watch this boulder that these guys jump over here. Oops. Uh, Charlie, you're probably at Shoot. one of the sorry, lower sinkholes, not uh, D or E. Okay. Watch these boulders. Can you imagine driving a go-kart? How much how much clearance is there underneath this car? Watch. I wouldn't take my F one fifty over that. I agree. XRP Hitman says insane that they pulled this off. How many were wax when they called this out? It's ridiculous. Watch this rock. This one here. I mean, how tall is that? It's gotta be a foot tall or more. And let's watch it. You should have something like four point oh and right okay, over it. We'll go. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, no problem. Uh, okay, we'll go on up. No problem at all. Well, easy driving uphill and down. And you're well ahead on the timeline. You've been making good time. Tony, I can see into, uh, Charlie, let's go up here to this big blocking crater. Man, Jeez. that's really good. Look at that, that? Ju <laughs> Look at that jump. Up here. That's crown. Whee! You want to go up to there? Yeah, that's fine with me. Fun. Fun, fun, fun. Till Daddy took the T-Bird away. Uh, it's this one. Five, four. Is it? Wait, which one did we watch? Lunar EVA from Rover. This one have any driving? Not really. The driving stuff is just too funny. But the one that has the, you know, that's the Grand Prix one. I've heard people say that they think that is a uh, a dummy. Have you heard that? They think this is like dummy. In there? They think this is a miniature. That's like if you go to allus dot com. That that's what I think they're, because they say they've done like. I don't know. They look at this mannequin, they call it, and they say that it doesn't ever move. So they think it's like a remote control car on like a mini set. I don't know. That's just what they think. I, I, I don't really see why you would need to do that. You could do it on a, on a set easily. With you know, this set has to be pretty big. But they had those huge auditorium. You know, Huntsville, Alabama. They can go anywhere. Oh yeah. Well, they blew up a huge portion of New Mexico out there in the desert to m make their own little moon thing yeah but i think like this would have to be inside i'm pretty sure but uh yeah i wanted to show if they show the side view when they when they show the side like this so you can actually tell that parallax doesn't work on the items that are uh i've shown this before that basically if you watch the far distant items again parallax would happen that you would pass one rock and then you would see it kind of adjust itself something that's in front of it right and then you pass it and now it's behind it that's never shown um so it's definitely, is this a better one? It's 429. Let me look at this one real quick. I'm trying to find where the one where you can see sideways. Yeah, this is kind of it here. Let me see. Pull this one up. <laughs> okay, so when something's close to you, let's look at these two rocks here. You'll notice that as you pass the them, zone. you're going to have that parallax move, right? So right before that, you can see that this rock is in front of this one. And as we pass, because of parallax, this is going to move this way and this is going to move this way and that's the way it works in real life you got the brakes up. see that so now this rocks past this one now if we watch for the same thing oh. and anything in the background Tony, this, this is the... shut up guys this is mm -hmm. a backdrop so this is real probably this line here is your your separation mm -hmm. and you have this back here which is fake and this back here that's real and you can tell because this obeys real life perspective and this does not so watch these rocks here don't change look at these two rocks here watch these two they're not going to change perspective. They're going to stay because it's a screen. Watch these two rocks. Not going to change perspective. It's a screen. So wh why isn't this rock falling in front of and this rock falling behind doesn't work? Look at these. These They stay identical. So anybody wow. who thinks we went to the moon. That's crazy. Is, is that's insane. a good catch, man. It's insane. There's no way that that's real. Um, it's just, a, oh, now watch. <laughs> this is the one. Watch all these rocks that start. Now, remember, it's been driving around. We saw it jumping, going over boulders. Didn't kick up any dust or any rocks. Now, all of a sudden, watch this debris that hits this car. And they don't even mention it. Watch. Look at the hey, sky. Tony, that was at, uh, Here it comes. What? I think it's 179 at uh, 4.4. 4. Look at that. Here comes more. Here it comes just raining. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We're getting rained on. Nothing. They don't even mention it.
We just set a new world speed record, Houston. 17 kilometers an hour on the moon. They say they never going, mention it at all. They say they're going 17 kilometers an hour. How fast is that? Of miles per hour? No. 17 kilometers. Per, oops. KPH. Two miles per hour. I Twenty. Oh, it's ten. Ten. That seems about what it looks like. Excuse me. Well, let's not set anymore. I'm with you. Okay, John. I got us out uh, two hours and. Uh, 40 minutes. 40 minutes, it looks like. And now we I don't... guess that'll be a new speed record. Yeah, <laughs> <I'm> jumping. <laughs> Hilarious. Your, uh, Tony, going back, looks uh, good. Look at that. Sun. Okay. Yeah, it's so uh, good. Going back across, son, uh, the track. That's not good. Up on this ridge here. These are just photos? Great. meters from the rim. I mean, it's still ridiculous. And these guys were communicating with NASA because they have the umbrella up here, which I guess is pointed at Earth at all times or something. Six. Again, here's another parallax view. I to get right and left. Okay, it's, it's really, probably out of film uh, now. Again, the impression is... I mean, it's like... And I there's even... no delay. They're just talking with NASA like, yeah. yeah, no big deal. But I don't understand how this isn't something that's pointed out by anybody who's in, in physics, who just knows how things work. Why is it that these guys have to be liars too? Can't they look at this and say, oh, you know what? That was a backdrop. Like, I'm the one who has to say it? Like, there's somebody who doesn't know about photography. There's somebody who's not a PhD. There's not, like, these guys are all such suck ups that they can't even call out something for being fake when it's fake. Yeah. I mean, look at this. There's no parallax back here. You can all tell right? this is a screen. Uh, no, we're just going to turn it off now. I'm sorry. You can see the line where the parallax ends. This is real ground. This is parallax, or this is a backdrop. And even if okay, it was, even if it's far away, and somebody says, Jaron, there's not parallax the same far away. Yeah, but there's still a little bit. So we should still see these two rocks adjust a little bit. And they don't. They're the same distance away from each other. I mean. And it's hard on the old fingers. I mean, look, they just swung around. You can't, I mean, now they're the same. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's insane. So does anybody watching the show uh, think that we went to the moon? Even after seeing that, I want to put a little poll in here just to see. If anybody is there, oops, not Q and A. Sorry, don't. I didn't mean to do that. Cool. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, how do you clear this? Shoot, I messed up. There we go. Let me ask a poll. Is what I meant. Start a poll. All right. <clears throat> is the rover footage really on the moon? Let's see if there's anybody who's going to say yes, or if at least we can convince people that that's fake as could be. Yes or no. Let's see what we get here. And start pull. There you go. Enjoy that one. Um, so, yeah, I mean, because it's just, I don't understand how anybody could think that in any way. It doesn't even look. Uh, compare with driving in sand dunes with dash cam. Yeah, and I think people have shown that the, you know, the dust kicking up behind it is completely, uh, looks just like driving a dune buggy in the sand. Uh, how did the lunar rover get to the... Moon, Professor Simon Holland. <laughs> it was always a mystery to me how the lunar rover got to the moon. Here's what I found out. Oh, and this guy, you could just tell you'd be, oh, great engineering, and they did it. Wow. Amazing. Anyway, you guys can find that if you search for, and I think there's probably, you know, one of the things I think people could do is if we somehow did some, well, again, I can't recommend that because they screwed me on the FOIA request, right? The FOIA request for me, if you guys remember, there's a scene where there's a, um, a guy hits a golf ball, supposedly, from the deck of the ISS, and it was like this big golf promotion, and it's the worst-looking footage you've ever seen. And so I requested a Freedom of Information Act for the entire footage. And, of course, they gave me the runaround, and they told me it would be a, a while. They'd have to have some. I'm like, it was only from, like, 2009. It was like, why don't you have that digitally stored? Why would you have to go look up tapes and record it onto a hard drive for me? But then they came back with a price of 1800 bucks, And... Then I said I wasn't going to do it, and then all of a sudden uh, some people started sending some money in, so then I put up a GoFundMe or whatever it was, and we were funded, and we ordered it, and it came back. It took about six months to get it, and then when we got it, all the footage was just empty footage. It was all cameras on the ISS, supposedly, but n you couldn't see anything happening. It was just empty. It was like, and it was like, well, what oh, well, that was a Russian one, and they, didn't, they weren't on the side that had the camera. I mean, it's just the Freedom of Information Act is the biggest joke of all time. I mean, imagine if... 
the government were to come to my door like, Jaron, we think you've been cheating on your taxes. We think you've been doing this and this. And I said, okay, well, give me about eight months and 1800 bucks to pull up that information that you need. And then they give me the 1800 bucks. Then I take eight months and I clean up my act. I forge some documents. I make some fakes and then turn it back in and go, okay, there you go. See, I, I wasn't up to no good. That's what the government does to us. They act like the Freedom of Information Act. Here's what the Freedom of Information Act should be. I should be able to walk into NASA and say, I want to see all the spacewalk footage from such and such spacewalk. And they should have to go get it and hand it to me. That's what That would be the Freedom of Information Act. But they don't. They have all the time that they want, and they can you know, show me whatever they want. How can I verify what they're showing me is correct? Yeah, they should have to have something there for you to see for you to inspect. Right. And why aren't they, why isn't it digitally stored since 2009? Why are we storing things in magnetic drives? And, and it's just stupid. Just stupid. I mean, every city has to do that. Every, right. They have to show you what they're spending their money on, their taxes and their account books and all that kind of, they have to be readily available to any member of the public who asks for them. Well, I'll tell you why they don't. They don't do it because then they wouldn't be able to charge you for it and they wouldn't be able to deter people from doing it. By making it so it's on a magnetic tape in some storage place and they got to go have somebody go get it and then they got to have somebody record it onto it. It's just an excuse to not do it. Or if they, if somebody goes through with it like I did, well, then they pay somebody to go and, and basically go through and clean up the footage. So the chances that you get something in that footage would be extremely rare. In fact, I think if you found something, it's meant to be shown to you. So kind of like what happened with Bart Cybrell and the... Um, Mm-hmm. You know, Bart Sebrell was given that footage because it confirms orbits. And that's what Bart Sebrell's position has been. Besides that, Bart Sebrell is crazy. He says that there's rovers on Mars. So the guy thinks that we faked going to the moon 250,000 miles away, but we really sent rovers 80 million miles away. I mean, what are you doing? What are you talking that, about? That makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> ah, we're going to fake this 250,000 miles, but that 80 million, we got this. Don't worry. 25 second delay or 25 minute delay for our remote control car over there. Makes a lot of sense. Go ahead. What the hell? Oh, it's like, what is this? I've never seen that picture before. Um, anyway, it's just the whole thing. I cannot believe that this world has fallen for this. And will it ever come out? That's why I think that there's some sort of reset coming or something like that. Because it just seems like NASA doesn't care much. They just keep kicking the, kicking the uh, Elon Musk on the moon landing. What's this? In 1969, we were able to send somebody to the moon. 1969. Mm. Um, then we had the, the space shuttle. The, the space shuttle could only take people to low Earth orbit. Mm. Then the space shuttle retired, and the United States could take no one to orbit. The, so that's the trend. The trend is like down to nothing. This is not. People uh, are mistaken when they think that technology just automatically improves. It does not automatically improve. It, it only improves if a lot of people work very hard to make it better. And actually, it, it will... So why is every other technology improved? Why is the only one this one? Like, you could say that. You could say what he's saying, but shouldn't there be other examples of it? Wait, hasn't rocket technology improved since the 60s? I mean, well, overall should, rocket technology? It should, and it should get cheaper. XRP yeah, Hitman like, asks, is he really that dumb or does he faking it too? I, you know, I'm, I go back and forth on it. I don't think he, I think that they fool him, to be honest with you. I think he's not, I a, he's, doubt that at all. he's not a rocket technician or whatever they call it, rocket engineer. Um, he doesn't have any kind of training like that. And I showed it the other day when he's talking about, you can tell it's real because it looks so fake. During that press conference, he's like shocked that it worked. He's like, I didn't think there was a chance that we'd be able to work. And then I see it happening. I'm like, oh my God, it worked. You know, like he, he's like shocked that it's working. I mean, it's not really what you want to get from your CEO. I think it by itself degrade, actually. Mm -hmm. You look at great civilizations like ancient Egypt, and they were able to make the pyramids, and they forgot how to do that. Mm. And, and the Romans, they built these incredible <laughs> They forgot how to do they that. They forgot how to do it. In 1969, we were able wow. to send somebody to the moon. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, we don't know buzz. Well, we didn't go there, because that's my question. Uh, be very careful on all these videos that you see now. I mean, I'm seeing so many fake videos. I saw fake eclipse videos. They're just, it's showing up everywhere. You just got to be really diligent about what you buy into because, uh, when you share things and you know, it, some, I, mean, I don't know, I don't know if you've seen as much as I have. It just seems like there's so many, uh, fake videos now and people vying for clicks any way they can, they're going to fake videos. It's just mm -hmm. what's going to happen. So, um, Anyway, let me see if there's anything else here. Okay, it looks good. All right, so let's go to um, 
what was I going to ask? What were we looking at? We were looking at, oh yeah, the movie. So that's what I think is going to happen with that movie is they're just going to make it look like, and so many people I think have already taken their position. P- either people think the moon landing was real or they think it was fake. I'm not really sure you're going to get that much. Um, how, how are you ever going to convince somebody who thinks we didn't go that we went? And how are you going to convince somebody that thinks we went that we didn't? It's just, and just think about how many egos are wrapped up in this too. Oh, how many right. people have told other people how dumb they are and this exactly. and that and yada, yada, yada. Once you do that, you're not going to, Yeah, uh, it's just not going to. How do you, it's how do you real hard for people to swallow that. You need to use, learn to use Twitter one day. I'm the worst that there is. I can never find like where my account is. <laughs> just get to my page. I'm just like, what do I click? If I click down here, this comes up. Add an existing account, log out. No, I want to go to my profile here. There we go. All right. Yeah, they were censoring me, so I quit playing on there. I was like, screw these people. Well, Elon gave me uh, my account back, which was weird. But this is, I was just pointing out to somebody that uh, this is how you know that his car in space is fake is because here you can see behind the wheel and you can see the earth through here. And, and when it goes by, it's clear as could be that there's nothing in the hood of this car. And yet, if it was a real car in space, which is what Elon says, he says it's literally a real car in space. Well, it's literally not. Because you literally, if you removed everything, it's a cardboard cutout or something. It's not even close to being real. If you, if this was real, then you'd be able to see the white wall behind this or behind. Yeah, this there'd be a brake drum in there too. Right, the brake drum? They don't have one of those. So you need one of those. Yeah, that's so funny because uh, Wits it says here is this a synchronicity? I randomly posted about this today. I forgot why I posted it. I'd seen something. Was it? What is this? Oh yeah, this person put. Meanwhile, in the passing lane. Um, but again, I mean, look at that. This is like, uh, how does anybody believe this? It, it's the most fake thing. I mean, look, you can actually see like this is like an earth going around like a stationary car in a studio or something. Like that's not really what you would see. Yeah, like, wasn't there a big glitch at the beginning of it? When it was like released? Well, yeah, but I think that people show – oh, look at this. I don't know. Maybe this is what I was looking at at first. Supposedly this is from – one of the satellites, I guess, or a view of the eclipse from orbit. But it's funny because I've got documents saying that the shadow is not circular, yet here it is. Hmm. They're like, oh, the shadow is this big oblong kind of looking thing. Yeah, I heard that too before the eclipse. Someone was telling me it was supposed to be oblong. Yeah, I have that uh, article about it. Um, So anyway, I just was looking up a couple other things. Uh, this here, I always like to point this out because I do, oops. Hey, all right. RG the artist in the house says, uh, thank you for, oh, hopefully this will help you out. And once again, I appreciate all of you and all of your hard work. On a different note, I'm pretty sure they needed umbrellas on the moon in case it rained diamonds from Saturn. That's what those were, by the way. <laughs> now that I think about it, they were diamonds from Saturn. Thank you very much. We have a goal down below. If you want to contribute to that, you can go to kofi.com slash globusters or send a Rockfin super chat. Are you going to watch those for me, Zach? I don't have that yeah. open. Yeah, I got it. So, I mean, here, this is what makes me so mad is it says science forum. Okay. This is the science forum and they're straight up lying to you. It says this phenomenon called a superior mirage. Eh, no, it's not occur when an atmospheric temperature inversion causes light to refract in such a way that distant objects appear elevated above their actual positions. That is a lie. These boats are sitting on water. Science knows this, but they refu- they keep lying to people because people would start catching on to the problem that, when we think we see the horizon, we don't. This is just the end of the basic, you know, our ability to discern detail in the in the in the distance, right? So at a certain point, mm-hmm. your eye can't discern de- detail anymore, and you get this kind of um, you can call it's it diffraction, right? Call it. Yeah, it's not a superior mirage because if you look up superior mirage, a superior mirage will always have a inverted image. Yeah, superior and you can mirage. still see the real image. Right. And then the <clears throat> other image is upside down on top of it. So a superior mirage is usually like this, right? So you see that this is a flipped image. Um, here, these items are flipped and inverted. This is not an inferior superior mirage. This, when I say floating ship, no, that's just the waters there. So there is no, I don't know what you would call it. It's called a lowered horizon. And in fact, Thomas Young, who's supposedly the, uh, foremost authority on atmospheric events like this, uh, I emailed him and said, can you please tell people to stop saying that these boats are, this would be considered a superior mirage. Why? Because you're seeing the boat upside down. Wait, is that upside down? That's kind of weird. That's looks a weird like, one. That's that a looks weird like one. a double superior mirage almost. Like it's right. That's doing it again. 
And yeah, same thing with like a Fata Morgana. They like to call these. These are not Fata Morganas. They are. It's he said, oh, that's a case of a lowered horizon. Now, what I think is that that always is the case. The horizon is always lower, and this is what those guys call horizon dip, and they say, but this is simply the horizon is back here. Now, we just mm-hmm. can't see it. You can see the boat, but you can't see the water. Now, why is that? I'm not really sure. It's just the, the, the almost like a mirroring of the, of the sky, but it certainly is not. Because imagine this. They make it sound like, oh, because of light or something, you see things higher than you see it normally. Well, where's the fucking water then? Why would our eyes not lift the water up if magically our eyes can pick out the boat and be like, oh, move the boat up, but not the water that it's sitting on. Leave that, make that disappear. <laughs> it's like so stupid that anybody would believe that that's what's going on. And yet they just, you know, here, that's a little better example because you can actually see. Now, how do I know these things? Go to Wide Awake's challenge, uh, channel. His name's Dave. Mm-hmm. He's got some of the best. He sat out for hours and hours and hours. Hundreds and, remember, and hundreds yeah. of hours. And I've watched hours and hours myself, and that's how you learn what's going on. Uh, I want to show you one video from uh, – look at this. Yeah, this isn't a rare phenomena. I mean, this happens – Dave shows that it happens just about every single day. Yeah. When you're at the right time, at the right spot, you just see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just crazy that – this is, they're lying to people, and that's what upsets me. It's like, can we just be honest? If science were real and honest, then – I mean, give me a break. Oh, we were watching on my channel the other night that guy from the uh, – let me show you the counterintelligence. Uh, it's in my telegram here. I just saw it. The office of, what is it called? Uh, not the office of, maybe that's the name of the video. But in this video, there's this scientist, by the way, I wrote him an email, two emails saying, I want to talk to him. Let's see if he actually gets back to me. He won't. But this video here, my name is Stephen Hawking. That shows the fraud of the Stephen Hawking. At the end of this video, you'll see this guy here. This is the guy I wrote to. His name's something, uh, John Timmer. And I'll give you his email address if you want to send him an email as well. Listen to what he said. Now, remember, we know we've proven that they faked the Stephen Hawking experiment, the helicopter behind the water. We've shown that they used a optical illusion at the Nat Geo one. So anytime the Globers have been given money and opportunity to prove the curve of the Earth, they instead choose to fake it. Now, watch what this guy says. Some head of editing at Ars Technica. Watch this. Helicopter. That doesn't make it real. All of which supposedly show errors made by the people behind the Discovery Channel program. Wait, hold on. They need to hear what you're trying to provide. I want to know how you're dealing. On YouTube, where you see a lot of... Your response is to put a box saying, nope, the Earth is not flat. Correct. Okay. Of course, she didn't mention the actual strategy as a Trojan horse. Oh, here, this a few years back, the Discovery Channel had a program where they used lasers and telescopes to show that the surface of a large lake was curved due to the curvature of the Earth. Let me know when you can see us on spots of the horizon. All right, Brian, how many feet are we above the lake? 24 feet. The Flat Earth proponents responded to this program with a series of videos on YouTube. I'm, I'm going to go with CGI on that whole helicopter thing because people would say, oh, look, well, what, what do you mean it's CGI? That You saw the helicopter. That doesn't okay, make- so remember, we got Daryl Marble here saying he's going with CGI. He thinks the helicopter's CGI. We've proven now 100% the helicopter's CGI. The helicopter is trick photography. It cannot be real. They, it's been edited. It's been, And you could prove that 100%. So now let's watch what this guy says. Make it real. All of which supposedly show errors made by the people behind the Discovery Channel program. What drives this sort of stubborn refusal to deal with reality? Yeah, what drives this stubborn reality? Because it's faked. So this jackass from Science World, or Ars Technica or whatever, the head editor, these guys are making it seem like we're crazy for questioning science. By the way, questioning science is the actual meaning of science. It is the actual uh, driving force behind science, is questioning things, being skeptical. What we've got is a whole nation or a whole world full of science lovers who have lost all skeptical ability. There wouldn't be anybody who ever showed that the Stephen Hawking thing was fake if it wasn't for flat earthers. There wouldn't be anybody it's showing religion. Yeah, you wouldn't show anybody that uh, that the Discovery Channel or Nat Geo was a optical illusion if it wasn't for flat earthers. So we are the only skeptical people left in the world. Everybody else will just suck on the teat of science. They don't even care. And this guy, who's some sort of editor, so I want to talk to him. I want him to apologize and say, well, the reason that they questioned it is because it's fake. Is he, can he not admit that? Can he not admit that we've proven Part of it's the fake? problem is that even the simplest demonstrations, like Wallace's or the Discovery Channels, require careful preparation and specialized equipment. Yeah, they faked it, John. They faked it. So Waves don't reduplicate themselves. Right. 
<laughs> in different scenes. It's like they faked it. So you're you. This is what I'm trying to get across to globe believers. You are the reason. You are the reason for flat earthers. Do you understand? You've had opportunities to prove this. You've had opportunities to show it. You choose instead to fake it and then to call us out as we've got some problem because we're questioning it. Well, we wouldn't question it if you didn't fake it. Not everybody has access to a helicopter and a telescope. Exactly. So then when those guys do it, they better not fake it, John. To do these sorts of tests. That's often a complaint that the flat earth people make. They need to personally experience the evidence. We don't need to personally experience it. If you do it yourself and you show what you did and it's we can't find any fault in it, then obviously we're going to accept it. Yeah, we don't just go out and say, hey, that's fake because it, you know, goes against what we think we should see. We find actual fakery. <laughs> right. We find the evidence that it's fake. So it's like you should be happy that we're doing it because you're like, OK, that you should go and form PBS. Hey, in the future, if you're doing a scientific program, whatever you do, don't fake it. There's people out there actually looking for that. So just complete the real Evidence. Just yeah. go do like the, the Antarctica thing. 24 footage where they use the exact same footage right. from the beginning and put it back in at the end. The right. clouds were the exact same. Right. And so Why? They, he's asking, like, I don't know what, what's with these guys' stubborn refusal of, well, but it's because when we looked into it, you were faking it. So it's not stubborn refusal to accept reality. It's stubborn refusal to refuse to accept your fakery. Rather than trusting the measurements of other people. Yeah, but you're faking it. <laughs> if you didn't fake it, it'd be another story. You're faking it. So I don't understand and where this guy's coming you're lying from. while you're doing it. You're saying, oh, look at two lines are almost completely gone now. And right. it's like, no, there's like half of a line half gone. A line. So this guy is like Sean Timmer, his name is. Uh, so it's jtimmer at arstechnica.com. If you want to write to him and just say, hey, you questioned why we are refusing to look at reality when it's been proven that what you're calling reality has been faked. So please inform us what we're supposed to do in the future. Should we accept all faked experiments that this is what our requirement is, or can we question things? And if we question things, are you just going to demonize us by saying, I don't know what these guys stubborn refuse. That's not scientific. It's the opposite. It's a religion. And that's sad to, that we've gotten to this point because they're the ones who are now causing this. They've had, I mean, again, does any flat earther have enough money to perform the kind of experiments that, need to be done. No, there's just not, it just doesn't exist. Do, does PBS have enough money? Does Stephen Hawking have enough money? Does Nat Geo have enough? Of course. So the people who are then charged with, if I was a Glober, I'd be so embarrassed. I'd be so embarrassed that the two times we've had, a, you know, somebody go out and try and actually show this, they faked it. So I, I, I just can't, it baffles me. We're heading to the largest lake in California to meet the Independent Investigations Group, and they want to do a round earth. Imagine this. This is the Independent Investigations Group. This is a group of men who I've met, a few of them. One of them, yeah, one of them I've seen numerous times because he was down at Salton Sea twice. He was at the premiere of the Flatlanders movie in L.A. I've seen him a lot of times. His name's Spencer. He's actually in this video. Uh, this is Spencer, right, where he's like, oh, it's starting right now. I forgot where he's at. Test, basically a test Just that will prove the that the Earth is, is not flat, yeah. but that it is round. James, how are you? Okay. Okay, so what's happening here right now? Okay. So here's this guy. He's the founder of the Independent Investigations Group. Now, why did they set up an, a, a, an optical illusion? Why, why, if you're an independent investigations group, you're actually going out, you're, these guys disprove whatever spiritual claims you come up with. If anybody says that they have ESP or that they've got some sort of uh, supernatural ability, these guys will send people out there and go disprove it. That's their job. Okay, this is the boat base target, it's horizontal stripes. Mm -hmm. We're gonna launch a small boat out into the water here with a striped target. One way that Aristotle proved 2,000 years ago that the Earth is a sphere was with a boat's test. As a boat approaches the horizon, it appears to slowly dip down into the water before disappearing completely. So it'll be a very visual depiction of the curvature of the Earth. So it's starting? Yeah. Okay. So this is Spencer. I gotta call him, actually. I'm gonna write it down because I want to I have some questions for him. Um, and how far is it across the Salton Sea? Uh, well, it's different in different areas. Yeah, I mean, it's like uh, 20 miles at some places, 18, okay. 11. So it's pretty big lake. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty huge. Um, just right in here, I'm going to call Spencer. Because I want to ask him, you know, what is your guys' explanation for setting up a, a, an optical Okay, so the test is starting. The test is starting right now. At first, all the stripes are clearly... So you'll notice, even this guy, John Timmer, from 
Ars Technica or whatever. I don't know if it's that he sees this and is like, well, I'm just going to let this pass. Or if like he's bought, drunk the Kool-Aid so much, he just thinks, well, they pr obviously did a good experiment. Be visible. But sure enough, as the boat reaches the horizon, the stripes begin to disappear one by one. Again, even her for saying that the stripes appear to disappear one by one. One by one means that there's more than one. <laughs> you can't say one by one if the, if the total amount is one half. It's not one by one. And you can see here the problem. Oh, he, he talks about it here. The horizon and surface of the water is beyond the boat. That means the boat is not behind any earth curvature. The bottom stripe here has a little bit of red hue to it. It's not a little bit of red hue either. Look at the size of the red stripe. And then look at this one. You're literally talking about six inches at most covered, which is just them sticking it in the water or waves that are in front of you. They're easy to cover six inches. It's no stripes have disappeared there. Again, if you don't realize, because I didn't, I didn't stop it and show you, what you have is an optical illusion because this black line is not the middle. The way that they set the board up is to go white, red, white, black, white, red, which is just retarded because this now gives you the opinion or the illusion that the black stripe is in the middle. It's not. It's on the lower half. So really, we've only lost six inches. And they of even the mark it in the center. Look at how. Yeah, it's mm. so bad. One by one. It's pretty amazing. You can actually see it pretty clearly with this camera here. And you see that the red stripe that was at the bottom has completely disappeared. I don't know about completely disappeared. It looks like I can see it. And it's now getting closer to sort of the middle uh, green stripe, that is. Now listen to this guy, and I know this guy too. I was on his podcast. His name is Ross uh, from Ross and Carrie. Oh no, podcast or something. Another guy I need to call and say, what are you talking about when you say? about one and a half stripes. One and a half stripes. So th they're just lying on their programs. He says, we've lost about one and a half stripes. Look at, have they lost one and a half stripes? They've lost a half a stripe. And, and that's uh, probably not even all that lost. No, and you've got the horizon line, which would be the edge of the curved earth behind it. So you can't be losing anything due to curvature. Right. So this can only happen why? Because of the curvature of the Earth. That's the only reason. Well, of course. Curvature yeah. of the Earth, of course. Hopefully we can go over CIA and KGB documents some other time. <laughs> it's all one government <laughs> selling you a false Christ. Mercy, it's not in them. And they are wiping your mind. They are. And uh, yeah, so anyway, if you want to write to John Timmer and just say, hey, d demonizing people who are doing the right thing which is being skeptical of science. And again, if science was what we were taught, you wouldn't have to be skeptical of it because they basically told us that basically God men do it, right? These men who have no bias, <laughs> these men who uh, everything they do is on the up and up and they would never lie because they would get their c career would be on the line and you know all this bullshit that, or my favorite is the one where Neil deGrasse Tyson always says, the way science works is you go out and do an experiment, you publish it, and then somebody else, they go out and they try and disprove what you just did. Like, yeah, right, dipshit. Nobody's going out and doing an evolutionary experiment, coming back with a paper, and then somebody's like, I'm going to go disprove evolution. <laughs> yeah, right. No, Not happening. They, they find exactly what they're paid to find. Exactly. Like every scientist on Earth. Exactly. Except for independent scientists who don't get paid. Right. We can't do those because they don't. From they don't the have inside to believe these things. But science is important. Science is valuable. Science saves lives, it makes our lives better and more comfortable. And to question what scientists are saying, it's really scary. Can you imagine that? To question what scientists are saying is really scary. No, that's science. You, I just got done telling you, Neil deGrasse Tyson tells us that you guys do an experiment and then other scientists say, let's go disprove that science. So they're, that's the method of science is to try and disprove somebody else, but not this guy. Oh, if they're questioning science, scary are they a threat to the work that you do as a scientist if say governments stop funding science because of some kind of anti-science anti-intellectual uh feedback they're getting from the populace that's when it really starts getting dangerous yeah so maybe stop faking for our civilization maybe stop faking that's all i gotta say <laughs> 16 alpha v says thou shall not question the scientist uh commandment number 11 um thank you tobias toby thompson what are you writing in the chat uh, nobody can confirm that. All right, so let's. Uh, I want to show up one other video real quick here from. Uh, where is it here? Oh, well, let's talk about the eclipse real quick. Let me show this. So, does this make any sense to you? Um, what you think we should see? Because I do get this that 
why don't we see like a shadow like this? Uh, instead, we see this, and let me watch a little bit. I think they show it here. Let's watch. This is from ba Banjo. I haven't seen this yet, so uh, I'm not confirming it. Let, we'll kind of talk about it as we see it. Oh, thank you very much, RG the Artist. He says, are you sure those big cruise ships don't hover? Because that would make much more sense. <laughs> I wish that girl just <laughs> fell out of those doors. That would be entertaining. I agree. <laughs> So if the moon were getting close to the sun like that, I don't understand why you wouldn't see it, why it would just be completely, if it should be causing a blockage of some type. Have to lower this music, we don't need to see that. Would, yeah, you would think the whole shadow should be there. I mean, the light is behind the edge of the sun. And it's behind I think by- you would see a shadow. Right, like this. It's very weird. Like, why do we see the sun? So now picture for me, if you could, that you are- Let's just pretend just for a second that, that we have the sun we see. Behind that, we have the moon. And behind that, we have a source sun. If then the moon goes behind the sun we see, this is what you would see, right? Because you're blocking a light coming through. Dave Weiss did a great example of this one time where he put a sheet in his room and was like doing it, showing the thing go behind it. I don't know if I could find the video now. Dave, if you're out there, uh, you want to jump on the show and show us? Do you know where that's at? Maybe he doesn't know where the video is. I will try to find it. I know exactly which one you're talking about. It's but, a great one. What is going on here? Why would you be able to see this line? Yeah, that makes zero, zero sense. So I do agree with that, that I don't understand why you would see this line here, which is the line of the sun, unless something's going behind it, blocking that light from coming through some sort of order opening or whatever. But if it's going in front of, you would never see this. We were talking about this on Globusters Tech Thursday, and... What did you guys say? Um, well, Karen brought up an interesting question. If it was going behind, wouldn't it? everybody see the sun like that everywhere? And I, my first gut reaction was like, whoa, that does make sense. But then I thought, wait, if the sun has oh, a source you mean, like, sun wouldn't it be and full? everybody's seeing a different sun in the sky from the source, you know, it's projected towards you from that source then yeah, you would have to be within a certain area because if you're way over here looking at the sun, you're not seeing the sun in the same spot as I am on the ground over here. Like once we try to start triangulating the sun with three people, Melodome says we don't see this. He says, you don't see that. That's an animation. We do not see this. I think that we do, but let me, uh, we'll finish watching this and then we'll, I know you have your footage and there's other footage we can check out. Let's check this out. I'm here also. Hey, Dave, do you have that video I'm talking about where you've shown? Yes, I'm, show I'm, I'm showing it on my screen. Oh, I What? I lost you. I right, play that. I'll be right. I'll turn it on in a second. Okay. I'm going to see if we can find any better view. This is one that happened a little bit late here. Uh, we want to see when it first starts. Well, I'm trying to think of what I saw, and I saw, like, you know, I saw it chunk out about here, and then I'm trying to remember what I saw as far as that line. Let me see here. So this is not what anybody sees, is what you're saying? Here. This is not a real footage? I was under the impression that it was. Yeah, now that you talk about it, now that you mention it, I think I just saw it like a chunk come out of it, but there was not this line. So it didn't look like that with glasses or the camera. Um... And so what did you have on your camera, Melodome? Just a solar filter? Was that what was on there? I'm assuming that's all you had. Was yeah, it you do see that line. You see the circle of the sun, but you don't see the moon outside of that circle. You mean this line here? Well, so that's what you say. Well, find me a video of that. Because we haven't seen it. I took a picture. Hold on. Let me get it. Yeah, yeah. Because we haven't seen that. And uh, I could go look at Melodome's footage. I saw that he posted, but I just haven't seen it yet. Let's go to Melodome. Yeah, he got some really good shots. Yeah, uh, let's see here what he's Makes got. Makes me wish I would have went and seen it. Let's see here, let's go to look at uh, Oh, this is the discussion. Does he have just the footage? I thought he did. Let me see videos. Uh, oh, no, maybe not. This one?
Uh, okay, but this is with a filter. So mm -hmm. what I'm trying to see is what you see in, really, because the filter is cutting that out. Let's keep going. <clears throat> so that's exactly what we saw without a filter. What, this? Yeah. Yeah, but there's no line here. That's what we're saying. That's what he's saying. He's saying you don't see that line. Banjo's video just showed that you do, but his was animation. So, oh, that was crazy. What was that, a plane? Yeah, that was a bird. He caught a really cool picture right there. I, he needs to turn that into a shirt. Wow. Give it to Crow. Yeah, Karen B. caught a uh, propeller plane. Really? Yeah. Give it to Crow. He probably wants it. <laughs> Look at that. Man, I keep missing it. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, somebody told me you can use these little arrows for frame by frame. That's kind of cool. I don't know where it went. I already missed it. All right. Oh, look. Yeah, send that to Crow, man. That is awesome. That is uh, great. It's like the ISS. <laughs> Did you look that up on Transit Finder to see what time that bird would be going by? Can you just find it? <laughs> um, oh, did he just slow down? Or, oh, okay. I should have just left it be rather than trying to do my own thing. Um, yeah, so he doesn't have... Oh, there's the camera... There, up there. I think that's what I saw mine, but I don't remember now. No, no, mine's an infrared, so mine's a different color, but it's still no different. Up, oh, let's see. So that's the vision of it, really. And that's probably. Can we see what Crow caught with the um, double stack hydrogen alpha filter? Yeah. Does uh, Van Mitri also have one? Yeah, but in Texas, where he was, it was all clouded in. He couldn't see the sun at all. So, Melodome, so this is. Uh, so this is right before the totality, right? So you don't, and then it goes from that. And then I noticed that your next scene is this. Is there a transition from this to this? Where, why, for instance, if you see light coming out here like this, why wouldn't that be the case here that you would see more light anywhere else? Just wondering, I've never, uh, maybe I should it's have, weird. want to have him come on the show real quick. Meldum, can you, oh, he's at work, I think on Sundays. If you can come on the show, let me know. I'll, uh, we're on Skype. I can, get hold of you somehow send a link on uh, telegram or something um because i don't see the transition here i see yeah i can come on if you can oh this is without the filter. oh he says this is without the filter wow wait hold on this is without the filter so then how does it go from this so then it's fully gone and now all of a sudden then it gets bright like that wow it like disappeared and then boom, that's crazy. What? Send it. Okay, let me send to you real quick. Let me. Can't you do a uh, Skype? Uh, can't you do a link nowadays? I think you can. Let me see. I forgot where you do it. Uh, yeah, let me see. Um, let's see, copy link to clipboard. There you go. Copy link. I'm going to send it on Telegram. Let's go with Mellow Dome. Austin. There you go. I got him. I can just add him to the call right okay. now. Okay, yeah, do that either way. All right, Austin, come on, and let's put this back where it was and switch to this. Okay, we'll keep watching. Yeah, Karen got some cool stuff with the um, infrared yeah, filters. Inf what kind of cool stuff? What Did it just a different color looking at? Yeah, it was like bluish, wow. and so then he got when that. she was moving the Polaroid in front of it, it was changing to like a purple hue. Wow, look at that. That's pretty yeah. good. I haven't seen a lot of that with the P900s, P1000s. Yeah, the last solar, or our last uh, eclipse, the sun wasn't in its maxima. You know, we were four years out of the maxima, closer to the minima. This year, we're like in the maxima right now. So this was a perfect time to catch all these prominences coming off of the sun. I just don't think this at all, for me, acts the way something would 93 million miles away. And then something 250,000 miles away. You're, you know, 400 times difference. And again, I remember we had that guy on who does the telescope work. And he was talking about the impossibility of seeing the moon crisp and Saturn or Jupiter crisp. Remember he said, you have to have, you can't have two items both in focus that are at different distances. And you can figure this out. If you put your hand kind of in front of your face, either you can focus on the background in the room, you can focus on the wall and get that to be in focus or you can focus on your hand but you can't do both 
your eyes can't work that way. You either see your hand in focus and the background is blurred or the background's in focus, your hand is blurred. In the eclipse footage, both things are crisp. The moon shadow the earth, and the sun, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me either. Why isn't one of them uh, very blurry? Um, did, let me see. Did he say anything here? Oh, he did get the link. Okay. So, to, oh, there you go. I heard somebody. So, oh, on there, my phone, on my phone. I hear you, but you're very quiet. Let me see if I can get your volume up or something. Uh, let's see here. I don't know how to do that. Where are you at on your phone? Austin, okay, Melodome. I took this solar filter off right before you seen totality. Oh, got you. Okay. So the the part that's kind of ending the eclipse is with the solar filter, right? And then you take it off right as it goes totality, and that's when we see the big, uh, you know, the the corona yeah, around it. Yeah, the screen's black because you can't see totality there, but I could see through the solar filter. Can you turn up somebody's volume or no? Do you know how to do that? I don't see a... Austin, if you could turn up your volume anyway, I don't know. Uh, you're very hard to hear. Yeah, I was looking for that. I see Can't the find profile, it. pin, remove from call, mute. I don't see anything that says volume for him. Uh, what is this? Uh... I've never seen the edge of the sun. Well, yeah, I've good seen... point. No, when you said that, I, you're great for calling me out because I... Uh, I don't think I've seen that either. Well, I think I've seen it, but again, I I can't verify that. So that's why I asked Dave to find that. If we don't see that, then I that's that was animation or not. I was trying to find out because I personally right. Um, you didn't see that. Um, yeah, I guess we could probably. There's tons of footage. You would be able to find it easily if it was there. I'm assuming. Let me put this back here. Uh, you're just a little quiet, Austin. Just you know, but uh, so what did you what did you think? I mean, I'm in the camp too that I don't think it's not the moon because the moon is that's where it is it's a new moon it's where it is i tend to have a disagreement about whether it's in front or behind but that's my own personal thing and um what did you think see anything weird about it what did you think um no man i think it's the moon i think it's weird that maybe it's some lens lensing effect why it looks like that to us but um I don't know. I think it was the moon. I'm more curious about those prominences, those flares, because the moon's, if the sun's 93 million miles away, there's no way I can record. Yeah, we're so showing it has right now. So much closer, you know, unless. But yeah, I think it's the moon. I mean, yeah, I can't I, prove that. No, and I, oh, that's, yeah, there's a prominence uh, there. Yeah, that's crazy that you caught those. Was this a, by the way, I don't even know what you have. Is it a P100, a P1000 or a P900? P1000. Oh, it's a P1000. Okay. That heavy ass thing. Uh, heavy, man. Yeah, I traded mine for an infrared converted P900. I kind of upset that I did that because it doesn't really operate as a real camera now. It's not like, infrared's weird because infrared, all cameras are infrared, but they put a lens in front of it to make it not infrared. And then you have to have that removed to get an infrared camera. It's not like you can put a lens on a camera and make it infrared. It's not the way infrared works, I guess. Um, yeah, look at that. That's crazy. I don't know if you guys can see. Oh, yeah, you can see good over there. Don't know yeah, what beautiful. Exactly that is. Yeah. Dude, it was amazing. I'll tell you what. It was wild because it was windy. You hear the birds. And as it gets dark, the wind just stops on a dime. All of nature is just it it felt like time stood still for a moment did it get cold oh yeah temperature dropped oh yeah definitely that's another reason i've always thought that the i don't think that the sun is getting blocked by the earth at sunset because we would feel the same phenomenon you would have the sun set and as soon as it set it should get immediately colder but that's not the way sunsets work sunsets work that it just gradually gets cooler because the sun is moving away from you in this case it, there's actually an item that seems to be blocking that heat um, it's like the opening of the sun cover, but they need to block it. The sun was so bright with 3% still reaching me. I could only look at it for a split second. It's so dang bright. I understand why we can't with clarity close close to that light source. Sorry. I understand why we can't with clarity close that light source. Huh? So that bright light is a Corona. How can we see it? Is there an atmosphere on the moon? It says, don't say, got me. Hey, later guys. Hey, thanks, Austin. Work. Appreciate it. Oh, you were at work. Okay, sorry about that. Thanks. Appreciate Much it. Much love, Austin. Thanks, man. 
Uh, just seeing what other people are saying here in the chat. Uh, Dave, you still here? Yeah, if you don't know, go check out the Melodome channel. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, so, you know, like here, this is what, I don't know if I've seen necessarily video that shows that part of the moon. Uh, but where, do you have your video ready, you said? Yeah, I can pull it up. Sure. Um, I put in the chat a picture. I just got a just a little video on a snapshot just before totality. Okay. But it's because we had so much clouds that I could see it. The problem is when you look at the sun during the eclipse, if it's clear, it blows out your lens unless you just have the just the right amount of cloud cover to be able to see the light going all the way around. So here's one here where I guess I'm confused on these views here because this can't be this has to be with some sort of filter right that's a solar filter right there right so it's funny because they don't want you looking at it with your eyes and they I can't see it on skype or can i see you should be able to see my screen on skype uh, right? i got i got it i see it on skype okay now. um but what's weird is if you think about it they tell you not to look at it number one and then they tell you to use a solar filter if you're looking so when you get the solar filter you do get this view I wonder if there's some, the other view that does show the you know the the edge of the sun. That's why they they make it so that you don't see that by either having a solar filter or your camera being blown out or your eyes can't look up there because it's too dark or that, too bright. That, I didn't hear what you said. I, I said exactly. They give you. I mean, they give you the solar glasses pretty much for free. Right. Um. Because just like the the V, they give you for free. Right. <laughs> they but don't that's want good. You, that's good for you though. Yeah. Safe and effective, just like the glasses. They always want to make sure everything's safe and effective for you. <laughs> Lovers of humanity. Um, yeah, I guess. And what are you expecting to see? We can't see. We, you're not going to be able to see it with a camera because the camera is going to blow out its lens. You're going to wreck your camera if you point it at the sun. Uh, yeah. At least I heard that. I don't know if that's necessarily true. Anyone ever pointed their camera at the sun and broke their camera? Dave, you want to try it with your P900 I, today? I did last eclipse and this eclipse, and my camera's still fine. You pointed it at the eclipse during the eclipse, no solar filter. Done total the whole time. And you have that footage? I mean, this time I barely had seconds, like a oh, less than a minute, it was cloudy. visible sun. But okay. last time um, I was filming it without a filter. But we also had a nice haze in the sky. I'm trying to see if we can find anybody who filmed it. Uh, I don't know. Just type in eclipse 2020 run boston bear got some good footage coming out of the eclipse i know because he had some cloud cover during that <laughs> the space station came on and showed this too it's great uh where's the space station right. footage? this is right here watch this it is what we've been witnessing here in person but this image this video is extremely rare and special for the viewing audience right now because uh, Drew uh, Forsell again uh, yeah. NASA astronaut is with me and you were telling me that this image perhaps is unlike any other that we've seen because everything aligned perfectly yeah it's really serendipitous right the only reason we got that shot is because the space station happened to be flying over the northeast US right at the exact time that the eclipse passed. That's so stupid. If if the ISS goes around every 90 minutes and the eclipse across the United States lasts two hours, three hours, whatever it is, how is it surprising that the ISS crosses somewhere near where that would have to? <laughs> That's 90 minutes. It's so stupid. They act like, oh, we just got lucky and amazing science. But again, this one to me, uh, why don't they turn and show the moon blocking the sun? In fact, wouldn't you be able to see it not blocking it? The windows down, Jaron. They'd have to turn the whole space Pat, station over. The shadow oh, boy, was coming forbid. across the, the nation. So at that moment, everything has to happen at the same time. NASA trained their high-definition external cameras on the shadow, and you could see that black spot moving across the country. And then it was gone because ISS is traveling at 17,500 miles an hour. That shadow's moving fast. You saw how quickly it got from Indianapolis what? out to Maine. It was a matter of, you know, what? 10 minutes or something next thing we know we're looking at it out there and then it's going to go off the coast so to have all those things line up the sun the moon the spin of the earth the space station it doesn't happen very often just like an eclipse doesn't happen very often. and i've noticed these all these flights that what's supposedly... it like to experience a total solar eclipse from a i'm just gonna make a prediction here i've not watched this one i've watched other ones but supposedly they'll show everything but they won't show the eclipse Let's Above see. the clouds, we join the party to find out on well, this not watch the whole thing. 39,000 feet through the path of totality. Hello, Jeff What's Setters? the one that I'm just happened? Yeah. It says... From yeah, nobody on the planes, either of them, We're saw the full solar eclipse. Let's get into the sky. 
Oh, there's what is that? Track of what's going on. But gonna... So the guy's like watching it from his iPad. <laughs> He's on the flight. <laughs> He's watching from his iPad. Uh, the, uh, oh, this is what we're looking at. Oh, okay. Well, can we just see it from the plane? Oh, here we go. Over Dallas as we speak. And sun right now is mostly directly above us. Oh, uh, they show it? Right, just a little bit. The schedule for tonight. The sun is directly above them. Behind us what? Is our best mm hmm. So uh, it's supposed to reach over it's Dallas. Right here, under seven would, minutes. out the window. Say again. If they're near the path of totality, wouldn't it be above the airplane? How would they see it? That's what they said. They yeah. said so it's from They so have to be like outside of the path of totality. Here in just about uh, six, seven minutes. And the crew are dimming the uh, lights uh, to add to the effect, but it's certainly getting darker out there. Uh, this is this is a super exciting moment. It sure is. I mean, that's what everybody has said. And uh, I think we're certainly we're certainly feeling that same level of excitement uh, here at 35,000 feet or whatever we are. So show us. Showed us. The cabin was dark and everyone got quiet as the sun slowly disappeared. The moon shadow on? moved at about 1,000 miles per hour and our plane was flying around 600 miles per hour. That meant we were extending the amount of time we'd spent inside the shadow. This is exactly what I'd wanted to see flying above the Fly clouds, above it. Oh. we could not only see the moon's shadow moving over the earth, but also the light at the edge of the shadow. It was unlike anything I've ever seen. It was nearly oh, impossible can't show to see the moon covering the sun from here. For that, you're much better off staying on the ground. But this light is unlike anything you could see from anywhere other than here, 39,000 feet. It's simply magical. Simply magical. All right, Dave, you want to show something? Absolute insanity. That is stunningly sure. beautiful. Okay, let me bring you over here, and we'll click on your name. Oops. You wanted me to show, I'm going to share screen, or? Yeah, whatever you want. Uh, I thought um, that it would come you up. Wanted me to, you wanted to see the sky sheet? Yeah, that's a good thing to show. Just to, if it's like, okay, yeah, that's yes. good. Let me reshape it, because you can't see. Yeah, that looks good there. Yeah, so kind of give so, us a rundown of what we're seeing here. Yeah, so this is a blue, I have a blue flannel sheet hanging up, and on the far side, but maybe 10 feet away, I have a, a flashlight that has a square lens on it. And I was like, oh, it's a square lens, that doesn't matter. But I'm looking at it on the sheet, and I see that it's uh, it looks round, and it looks just like the sun, even with the glow and everything. It's the sky. Yep. So I need you to point to the sun, point your finger right. Over. So is off to my left, and she sees the sun where she's pointing it. I see it over there. If I go over, she sees it there. Everybody's seen this. This is good, though. And I see it there at the same time. So we all see the sun in a position relative to our own. Correct. That's why you can't triangulate the sun. Like, if we're, so, okay, I'm, I'm five feet away from her, let's say, or three feet, whatever, and that sheet is, uh, you know, three feet in front of me and the sun is there. She sees that she has those first two measurements, but she has a sun in a different place. No way to triangulate it. Yeah. It's like the sun coming to your feet on the water. It comes to everybody's feet, right? It doesn't, I can't watch it go to Jaren's feet. You know, that's because reflections yeah. are person dependent. Shadows are legit though. Shadows are not person dependent. I'm going to close the window. Okay. Um, so, but I remember you did an eclipse one where you showed the eclipse happen behind. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have that too. You want to pull that up? Yeah, if you want to just show that, just because I mean, it's some I mean, people should think about it just to, as a thought process here. Uh, and I want to show this. I still think that whatever is eclipsing the sun is coming from behind the sun, but I'm not married to it. I just think... I'm not married to it either at all. But I do yeah. think that it tends to lean better to the to the evidence. Uh, right. Well, yeah, when you're trying to figure out a model, you know, you're putting together lots and lots or a puzzle, you're putting together pieces, right. and you have to make sure they all fit. And there's only one piece that's going to fit with all the other pieces around it. Right. So yeah, there's, you know, there's lots of pieces out there, but you have to find the ones that all work together in a cohesive, coherent, you know, unit. And the one the thing that makes it hard is it's a good idea you talk about puzzles. Like imagine that somebody gives you a puzzle and they tell you, they lie to you about it. Right. So they say, here's all these puzzle pieces. It's a, it's going to be a navel orange. And so you start trying to decide, but it's a lie. It's not a navel orange. 
So that's the kind of position we're in. That's why we have to kind of spitball sometimes. We have to kind of guess at some things because we've been lied to. And that makes it much more difficult to build a cohesive picture. Uh, and I think that they know that and they do it on purpose. Uh, we've got Upside Down Guy says the eclipse is awesome. I was in totality. I shared a very amateur phone recording of it, of the countdown in the Janitors and VIP, and a photo from my phone. I think they scared people away from seeing it by saying it would be a traffic nightmare. Uh, we've got Adam who says Weiss's bed sheet eclipse is legit. I think that's what's really happening. Uh, we've got whatever that is. Tai Yu Fi Shu uh, I love the globe because it's big like my brain. All righty. <laughs> Best All right. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Everybody. I'm sure. Is it pixelated as I'm seeing it, or does it look okay? It looks kind of pixelated, but your last I don't video, know what that is. Your last video was like airing out, too. It was a little bit weird. Skype sucks, let's be honest. Skype sucks. Um, I could send you it on Telegram if you want, or I could just listen sure, to it. Sure, if it looks better. Matter, I guess. If it looks better, we'll watch it from... All right, let me, let me stop sharing it. Okay. You stop a sharing. <laughs> I can do that. I'm married to an Asian. So you're allowed to make fun of him. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. You can do it even if you're not, Jaron. <laughs> this comedian had the funniest joke. He said that his, uh, he was at a uh, he was at an airport and whatever. He was having a drink and some uh, Asian girl came up to him and he's like uh, talking to her. And then he says, so what do you do for a living? And she said she was a pirate. And he's like, that's weird. I didn't even think they had pirates anymore. And she goes, well, who do you think flies the planes? And he said, oh, a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Uh it's funny, funny, funny. I'm trying to look for any other ones here. These are all I'm noticing mostly just mainstream eclipse footage, right? Like where's the uh eclipse? I don't know what you would even call it. Uh what is that hydrogen alpha you said? We could look that up. Yeah, double stack hydrogen alpha. That's why I can't wait to see if Crow saw it or not. Solar eclipse through alpha filter. Let's watch this one. Let me make it a little larger for you guys. YouTube video. There we go. Do you do you understand what a hydrogen alpha is? I don't get what it even is. So there's basically it has gases supposedly. It? Okay. Yeah, and it changes the amount of diffraction and things like that. Um, when Royal Rife was doing his microscopes, uh -huh. this is how he was able to make them so good because he was looking through certain gases. So yeah, they've known about this kind of stuff forever. It's just still super expensive to get. There we go. So this looks like not a filter that I can tell. Maybe it is one, but you don't see that sun line. Let's go and look. Oh, let's put the glasses in front of it. the camera just for a second. Move the lens. I'll see it just for a second. Look, look, almost gone. We are very close to totality. That's what it's called. Totality. <laughs> when the moon covers the <laughs> totality. You. Thank you, Enrique, for teaching us that. Uh, <coughs> anyway, uh, what did you say, Dave? Were you saying something? I thought I heard you say something. No, I just said totality. <laughs> Hydrogen alpha. Uh, 
raw. Let me go back one more and see if there's anything in here that looks. Yeah, and you can get different views with the hydrogen alpha depending on your ISO. Really messing with that, you see different features. Wow. Sometimes you can see a bunch of prominent features on the surface like that right there. That's a low ISO setting. Wow. And the sun actually does have weird, crazy features like that on its surface. Back in 2017, when I saw it, um, it looked like it had a giant crack almost running all the way through it. It was wild. It looks creepy too. You know, another weird thing, and these are just things I've heard before. It doesn't mean that I believe them in any way. But have you heard people say that the moon is a former sun? Mm -hmm. I've heard that that idea. Like it's burnt out or something, and that's why it looks all dead and the sun is bright. I don't know that, but just things I've heard. Yeah, there's tales of before the moon time. Yeah. You know, and they said when it came, it brought huge devastation and all kinds of bad stuff with it. Right. This is a time lapse. I'm sure it's a filtered one. So funny. I was out in the garage working on a, I'm building a shuffleboard table and I was out there working on it, listening to it live after I got tired of watching it. And I was like, I'll just go inside. So I was listening to it and I hear this girl start crying. I'm like, what is that? And it was the, the newscast reporter was like <laughs> crying during the eclipse. And I was like, okay, what the hell's going on here? Going for Emmy. She's like, is it the most amazing thing I've ever seen? I'm like, okay, that is a little bit much. Give me a break. So did you see the one in 2017, David? I did. We had um, uh, a chemi hazy sky, so I could stare at it the whole time, no problem. Which one um, affected that's you more? That's in my video. In the, uh, Darren, I linked you the video. The Telegram's taking a long time to upload. It's just in the Skype chat here. Okay. But um, the uh, what, what was your question, Zach? Which one you think affected you more? Was it the first one? No, I would say this one because of totality, and um, and we were. No, I I even think that you're staring up at the clouds, and you even though you can't see the sun, the energy is still coming, and so mm -hmm. I feel I feel I, I'm trying to put it, trying to figure out what it is, put it in words, but I definitely feel a shift since then. I don't know I don't know how to describe it. Okay, which video I see two here, right or no? Um, the last one I sent you is well, one the ones is just a picture where you can actually see the moon in the eclipse. Okay, I saw that's the that. video. I gotta tell you that before the show, uh, <laughs> Zach said something about it. He's like, Oh man, did you see David post another one of those? And I'm like, Go look at it closer. David's inside there. <laughs> <laughs> this one here, if you look very carefully, it looks like God's trying to tell us something. Uh, I'm just, I, I, you can't fake that, Jaron. You can't. It's not fakeable. <laughs> no, it's pretty Stop true. It. It's pretty true. We could run, we could look at the, uh, I wonder what it would happen if we like put that in photo forensics. Foot. Photo forensics probably wouldn't show anything. Uh, okay, so this is what we show in here. This is your. Yeah, this is, this is my, um, it's just, the, it's a very, it's like, it's like a minute and a half, two minutes, whatever. So that's the real eclipse that I filmed. Okay. And, you could just use the Jaron. You you always forget about the L and the J button. Yes. Instead of dragging, you use the L and the J button. Ten seconds, got it. It's up to ten seconds, right? Jump, jump. <laughs> I think if I go now, it'd be yes. Yeah, I would miss this. Okay. Oh, good. You're yeah. showing this. Yeah. So there's my just like my blue sheet. I have a projection onto a paper towel, and the, a snapple cap is my moon, and you don't see it coming, eclipsing, or exiting. That, okay. That looks like the most that, like reality to me. That's exactly what we see. And then sometimes during the eclipse, when the conditions are just right, you could actually see see the source that's behind it, right? So my 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 paper towel is pretty opaque, so I switch to um, tissue paper. But so th this is how it's this is what's happening. This is a side view, right? So again, and, when we're when I'm saying that the moon is behind the sun, what I mean is that this is the sun we see. The moon goes behind it, and it it uh, occults the actual source. Yeah, and maybe it's just a polarity change. You know, maybe the new moon is like a piece of polarized film, and when it interacts with the polarization of the sun, I don't know. 
All I'm saying is right. And if this, if this you is, if you pass the moon up top here, nothing would happen. Right. Right. Or below it, nothing would happen. Whereas so, I think so, if you bring so, this in front, we would see like the edge of it and stuff. And think about it when we, let's say it's like this. So we watch the sun and moon, but it goes. I mean, watch the moon go by. If it's coming back around, you wouldn't see the moon phase for a couple a day or two, because it's behind the sun. So it has to come around here. Now you'd start to see it, or coming this way. Now you'd yeah. start to see it. So and that's what off we see. to the side. That source sun will light it up more or power it up, whatever it is. It's definitely not reflecting sunlight. And uh, I just saw a happy birthday epic. to Austin from Melodome. Didn't see it's his birthday, so. Happy birthday. I'm sure he's turning 22, probably 23. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday, Austin. Happy Big birthday. shout out to Flat Earth Eric Daly over on Rockfin. Thank you, brother. $5 Super Chat says, fill out your FE app profile. Build the flat world. Nice. Good idea. Uh, that's 40. Where, what, what app is he talking about, Jared? I don't know. The flat Just Earth out sun sun moon moon. Com. What is it? <laughs> okay, well, let me see. Should I go there? <laughs> Uh, you can flat earth austin.com. See what goes there. What's going on there? Uh, is this over? Flat earth austin.com. Did I not hit enter? There it goes. Oh, how nice. Welcome to the flat earth. <laughs> scroll, down, <laughs> scroll, down, scroll down a little bit. Um, stop right there. Look, we got the we got the audit NASA. Yeah. I've added nice, very nice, All right. Latest interviews. Where's Austin? That's it. That's, I, that's all <laughs> I came here for Austin. Can't believe it. Uh, no. So anyway, David, you think it's a good idea that we hand people some cards or some PDFs that they can go take it to the movie when they it, go watch? Just like you said before, it, it's good. I mean, cards are easier to hand out. If you're going to put them on the cars in the parking lot, you get away with that once carefully. You know, you'll do it. And then after... You know, and then hit the road. Right. <laughs> Maybe don't uh, put your contact information on there. Not that you would. It's just going to our website. Um, you know, it'll happen once. If you get caught, the worst thing that'll happen is they'll tell you to take them off the cars. I don't even think they'll do that. So you, you just, just do pretend it. Your, you hit it real your quick and you leave. Um, yeah. You know, handing them to people. It's, people don't – when when people are walking by, they're not – like the people don't want to – you know, when you try to hand somebody something, they're like, no, thank you. No, thank you. Right. Um, but putting them in the seat back, you know, on the seats, that's a good idea. But again, you know, you're not going to be able to get every seat in the theater without getting busted. I don't know why I think you would be able to, but I guess I'm just tripping. But I feel like you can get there early enough and there's never anybody in the theater. I'm always like sitting there, but you know, with Miss and I are, and there's just nobody else there. Um, but anyway, who knows? Uh, all right. Well, thank you, Dave, for that. I want to show some videos about, um, the observation we're going to be making this week by, or just starting tomorrow. I'm going to leave. Bright and early tomorrow morning to head down to San Diego. So hopefully we'll see some of you down there for some sunset footage. Um, Dave, anything else you want to talk about? What's new with the app? Um, some more updates coming on the app. The The whole um, meetup maker is going to be a game changer, I think, uh, for letting people know what meetups are around them. It'll notify you when there's a meetup near you. Everybody has control over their own data. Um and it's going to, I think it's going to be, it's going to create a lot more meetups and you'll never miss one that's near you if you just turn it on and ask it to notify you whenever there's one near you. So I'm really excited about that. That is uh, um, coming in a couple of weeks. Nice. And nice. then um, besides that, you know, um, also the people are starting to realize in your profile, there's a thing that says keywords. And, um, you, if you put in what you do, what you're good at, you know, like, hey, I, I build garden boxes in South Carolina. Okay. And if somebody, you know, types in garden, gardening bar boxes, South Carolina or whatever, your profile will come up. So people are actually doing it. Somebody was looking for solar power um, in Florida. Now I have a good friend, Flat Earther, in Florida that's literally the best solar power de developer there. And um, he had. If you type in solar power in the uh, in the search field in your profile, his his profile comes up. So we all want to work with each other. We all want to support each other. As soon as people really start filling in that information, it's going to be the ultimate networking tool. It um, is for for everybody. You know now. Can um but, somebody had a question in chat? It was a good one. 
Uh, bah, 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 bah. Damn it, I lost it. Oh, they were asking, are you going to have, like, um, be able to see how many meetups are being placed when, when that comes to the app? Yeah, that's absolutely. You'll be able to flip through it like TikTok, you know, boom, next one, next one. It'll, it'll sort it in chronological order. Or you could say, just show me the ones that are within 500 miles of me. And there'll be a switch that says, notify me anytime there's one within 100 miles or within 500 miles, whatever the, whatever um, settings we put. I think I want to do 100 and 500 because – yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. And uh, and then you'll also be able to search by the name of a meetup. Let's say you like Flat Earth Social. You you know that they do it um every uh, last Tuesday of the month or whatever. You just type in Flat Earth Social, and all of the Flat Earth Socials will come up in the UK. Or uh, there's um you know I'm going to the Sounds Beautiful um, festival in the UK. Anyone that's listening, July, June 27th, 28th, 29th, and 30th in uh, somewhere in the UK. Um, it's called Sounds Beautiful. You just be able to search Sounds Beautiful, and it'll come right up. It's yeah. gonna be awesome. It's gonna be just like it, I think it's gonna encourage more people to do meetups, and um, and it's also gonna, you know, people like people are like, oh man, if I'd known you had a meetup, now there's no excuse. You won't be able to know. And, I, and we're gonna I'm gonna set it up. You could say, email me that meetup <laughs> if one, as soon as it's scheduled. So if somebody schedules one within your radius. You're going to get an email with that meetup in it. Dave, check that out this. We should have done this. That's it. We could do this and get 328,000 views. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. And then we, we've got this. We'll have a total solar eclipse. Come on, yeah. guys. It's on the <laughs> They're lying. Oh, boy. Too funny. Uh, yeah, I don't, haven't seen any good footage yet. This is the old one. Uh, but I've not seen anything really crazy yet another big shout out flat earth eric daly over on rock eric says go to the theater wear a lab coat and have a clipboard hand out info sheets win-win that's the, the, the power of the clipboard and the lab coat mm -hmm. it does go a long mark, way mark that as a as a thing a little extra with a pocket protector then it's like absolutely guaranteed yeah, the one thing, and I, I'm not saying I know all things. I'm just going to show you because I keep getting people who say that the shadow goes the wrong way, and I don't think that that's true. So I'll just show why it's not, and then you guys can make up your own minds if you want to well, keep saying The shadow that. could be going the wrong way if the Earth was spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. Just ask Curious Jay, but <laughs> it makes perfect sense on a flat on a station here. Correct. So if you're talking about like this, we've got a – let's see if you guys can see that. Yeah, let me zoom in a little bit. All right, so let's just pretend this is the – flat earth and we've got uh the usa here oops i just had to draw it so let's say we've got the usa here and you've got florida and you've got uh, south america all right whatever and you've got africa over here. okay so there's kind of your flat earth and we've got both lights the moon and the sun going around and let's go like that for the moon so the moon takes 24 hours, 50 minutes to go around, so it's always slower than the sun, right? So if we kind of picture now, pretend that this is the sun. The sun goes around in 24 hours, then it's going to come back to the same spot 24 hours later, but the moon is going to be behind, right? So if they both started on the track together, the sun comes back around in 24 hours, the moon would be here. And then you're going to go again, and the moon would fall backwards. So the moon is falling backwards compared to the sun. So now picture the day that happens, the eclipse, the sun is here, and the moon is going to get surpassed by the sun, but it's going to basically fall backwards, right, because it's going slower. So the sun, this is why you see the shadow go this way. The shadow is going to go this way across, for example, let me go here. The shadow is going to go this way because that's the way that the moon is falling behind the sun. If here's the sun, it, it's not going oh, this hold way. Hold on. Yeah. I, I think you're describing it wrong. It's the the the— the, the sun is just passing the moon. Even though the moon's moving clockwise, the sun's moving clockwise faster. So hold out your fist, get a flashlight in your right hand, and shine it on your fist so the shadow is off right, to your left. Now to move the slash flashlight past the moon, keeping it on there, and the and the shadow is going to go to your right side. We're doing it right now. So you grab your phone, you grab your light. Go to the flashlight, go. Why is my flashlight working? Okay. I have a flashlight. Just grab your phone, grab your hand, yeah, I've got flash, a make the shadow on your left, and then move the flashlight to the left, and the shadow will go to the right. Yeah, yeah. You mean move this to so the sun? So here's your moon, and then the sun's going this way faster. 
and so the shadow yeah. goes this way. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why people say it's going the wrong way. I guess I'm kind of confused by that. Uh, because you could just again, like you said, I'm taking a light right now. I'm holding up a light above my head, and I'm just moving my iPad left to right, and that's the way the shadow goes on the ground. See if anybody disagrees. Uh, <clears throat> uh, get a flashlight. No, 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 no. <laughs> wrong thing we're talking about there. Wrong thing. All right, so I want to show a couple videos of the. Uh, let me start out with. This one, which I thought was good, just kind of explaining what is weird about these observations that we're going to go make this week. This is by The Plain Truth. Travis, uh, let's watch from the beginning. It's only, oh, it's nine minutes? Oh, we might watch the whole thing. Let's watch this because I think he makes some good points here that we should really think about. Here we go. And make sure you guys can see it here. Yes, almost. Let's go YouTube solo. Okay, let's check this out. And internet. And internet. Come on. What's going on here? Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. What ho? What's going on here? Did I have some things open I shouldn't have? We'll shut down Google Earth Pro for a second. Maybe that's doing some damage. Let's try again. Hello, 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 what ho! Welcome back to another exciting adventure of The Plain Truth. I'm your host, Travis Finley, on the Ubercast. So what I want you to think about is... Just think about what you would think about if you had to think about this topic on your own, or even with someone else for the first time, okay? So... <clears throat> you and a friend are standing out on the beach and you look out toward Anacapa and you have a camera or a high-powered telescope and you're like hey man look we can see the uh, lighthouse and your buddy goes hey look over uh, to the left man and see if you can see the the arch man it should just be right there in front of the uh, southern tip of the archipelago man and then you look over and you say I can see the end of the island but I don't I don't see an arch, I, you know, it's, da, 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 you know. So you can see the island and you can see the lighthouse, but you can't see the arch and this is in the morning. So then when you come back out later on, and let's say 12 hours later when the sun is setting, so now you're coming out in the evening and you're setting up in the exact same place and you get your camera out and you zoom in, not gonna, you're not expecting to see the, well, look at that, look, there's the arch. There it is, right there. But I couldn't see it before, but I can see it now. Well, so then, how does that work? How would you figure that out? All right, so if you don't know, you, well, you, you get different views, obviously, throughout the day, and so to make a determination of, oh, we see it, we don't see it, is a little bit iffy because sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Now, the problem is, is the times that you do see it uh, should not be possible. Let's keep going. Think about, think about two people thousands of years ago going out to the beach uh, and up seeing one image in the morning and they can't see something. They can't see the arch, but they know it's out there. And then they go out in the evening and then, lo and behold, they go out in the evening and they look out and, oh, we can see the arch now. How do you think they would talk that out? Why couldn't we see it? Da, 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 da. How come we can see it? Da, 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 da. Okay? My position right now on this is that no one ever in the, in the order of the plebeians, right? Of the order of the lowest class of, of people, that is people who are not the elite, okay? No one ever would have suggested that the Earth was a sphere in a place called outer space, blah, blah, blah. That whole narrative in my position has been entirely manufactured by the elites because no one, no one ever would have ever suggested that the Earth was a, a sphere or a curve because people would have talked with one another and they would have argued with one another, they would have debated with one another, they would have, they would have been able to reason, come, and reason together, 
right? Okay, so imagine these two talking for the first time about this. Not one of them. If if no one had ever suggested that the Earth was a globe before that point for these two people talking two or three thousand years ago with each other on the beach, right? If they had no clue that other people thought that the Earth was round, they wouldn't have any idea about the Earth being anything. They would just talk about what they see or what they don't see or whatever. And part of that discussion would not include creating these refraction events known as looming or a superior mirage. Two normal people having a conversation about looking out over the Pacific Ocean and seeing Anacapa, they would never have created the concept of looming or a superior mirage because those two concepts depend upon the Earth being a globe. And I'm telling you that no one three, two, three thousand years ago would have ever described where they lived as the flat earth or a globe or whatever because people they just wouldn't have thought that way like look you know i'm saying this okay this, i'm already on this okay this is my opinion uh they would have just known about traveling hither and thither go turn it turn left at that rock turn right at the tree that got split by uh, you know lightning back in the day blah 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 right they would have just known about going one direction or another the earth wasn't flat or a globe no one would have talked like that. So I'm trying to give you a demonstration of something that you can see with your naked eye at times, depending on the condition of the medium. And sometimes you can't see. And the only reason why is refraction. So if these two guys 2,000 years ago would have been thinkers having a discussion, probably one of them would have started a new hobby for, them, for himself and become a meteorologist to understand how the air is changing what happens out in the distance, right? That's how scientists are born. That's how I was born into this discussion. And this is my contribution. I'm telling you that based on five years of, of observing and watching these events over and over and over again in multiple places, I've never thought that the earth was curved or flat or, you know, what I'm saying is that every day is different every presentation of this observation on on other days is an entirely different field of view nothing matches he's got some uh... and so that would have been the beginning of the science of meteorology and understanding how the air he's got some crazy stuff on his channel the ubercast uh he, travis has done some great observations i don't know if he's going to be down there i know he kind of oh i don't think he lives down there anymore he used to um, this one here I've seen before. This is a crazy video. I don't even know how to even describe it because you actually see boats. Um, you, see, you see cars go by over here, right? You see these cars off in the distance. Uh, and then throughout the day, you get this uh, change. Look at this, like changing and how drastic this becomes as I click through here. And it gets to be pretty soon you start seeing. Look at now you can see water like up here. <laughs> And then you get to see this boat go by down here and you kind of lose touch with the reality. Like, wait, where is everything? That is wild, man. It's crazy. It's like, this is a reflection here, but a reflection of what? There's nothing to reflect. This tree is not reflected. This is reflected. I mean, that's just insane. It's insane what we're looking at there. So he's done some great work like that if you want to kind of... Uh, Swing through that. So now just to tell you about what's going on tomorrow, if you are in Southern LA or so SoCal, uh, we're going to be starting off in San Diego for tomorrow night's eclipse. Uh, let me bring up Google Earth. And I believe the ecl uh, not eclipse, sorry, sunset. Sunset tomorrow at uh, 7.30. You know, get there earlier than that. Hoping some people show up with a P900 so that we can put it next to my infrared P900 and at least see the differences there. Uh, it won't be as if in case we can't see or in case now it has been raining the last three days, which is good because usually when it rains, it gets rid of the marine layer. Let's hope that's what happens, but can't guarantee it. So we're going to be starting out. Uh, and by the way, if you want to keep track of all this and where we're at, go to t.me slash sunset behind, just like the name of today's episode, t.me slash sunset behind. And we'll kind of keep people updated because it's going to depend on how the first day goes, where we go for the second day. So really what we're trying to see or what I want to see is I want to see San Clemente Island from right here in San Diego. And we're going to find the spot here. Let's see if I can find it easier than the other day. Let me spin around. Makes it a little bit easier. 
So I'll show you where we're going to be day one. And then I don't really know for day two, day three. It depends on what we see and what we don't. So right here, if we get down into this spot, there's going to be somewhere called Coronado's Kays Park. Let me see where I'm at here. Oops, am I missing it? Uh, come on. Imperial Beach. Hold on, let me just find this where I'm looking. Uh, where am I? That's all the way in Tijuana, so it's not there. I believe it's right here. That's the sand. Okay, so it's going to be right here. So right here, there's a parking lot. You'll see it here. Oops, you guys can't see my screen. Oh, you can. Uh, is that big enough? Can you see the whole thing? Now let me make this a little bit smaller. One second. So you can see everything I'm seeing all the way up to there and all the way down to there. Yes. And let's close this in here. Okay. Now you can see. Nope, still can't see the whole thing. Hold on. I want you to see everything. There we go. Okay. Now it's, I know it's a little bit small, but this way you can see the whole screen. <clears throat> so down here you'll see, uh, this says California State Park Building. So we're going to start in this parking lot because this parking lot, which looks empty, I don't know if it's always empty, but if we drop this guy down here, you're going to see that they get a great view uh, from this parking lot of your wide open expanse here. So this is what we want, and we're going to be looking. And the great thing about this too is usually, well, the great thing about sunsets is you don't have to know where to look. You're looking at the sunset. So it's kind of already done it for you. But if we want to know what direction we're looking at, we're going to look right past this little alcove right here. You'll see this little pop out here. If we go right by that, then that takes us right to San Clemente Island, which is going to be right here. So we're just going to be kind of peering this way right past that little alcove, seeing if we see that. Now, if you look, that distance is, and actually you want to look to the highest peak, which is a little bit inside, 78, 77 miles. Okay. That's a extremely far distance. So it's not something that should be expected to be seen because that's pretty difficult. But I think that uh, there's, you know, if I ever saw the sun set on the water, I'd be very shocked uh, from this location because if you get down here, you're going to see that we should see that. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the sun. Then I'm going to go to tomorrow. So here's tomorrow day, and we're going to get the sunset right here. Okay. So, oops, you can't see the whole thing. Let me move this one out way over here. There we go. Now you can see the whole thing. So that's what I want to show you. So that's what we are going to see is the sunset behind. Now, again, if you go to here and we go to Metabunk Curve, uh, CURV calculator, <clears throat> and we said it was uh, 78 miles, and we said that the viewer height and feet, it shows about 12. Let's go 20. That's just 12 plus a, a tripod, and we'll go advanced. And you'll notice that the refracted hidden is 2969. Okay, so that's giving them refraction is 2969 is hidden. But if we go to the uh, highest peak on San Clemente Island, highest peak San Clemente Island is going to be Mount Thirst, which is 1965. So even with refraction, let me turn this off so you can see that. I see Kofi in the way. Okay. Or Kofi. Uh, even with refraction, we're talking about that top of the Mount Thirst should be a thousand feet below. And really, if we go to the geometric, which again, giving them refraction is a little bit of a stretch in my opinion, seems like what they did is a certain amount of years ago when they started to see the optics and cameras and telescopes were getting better is they had to increase the size of the earth. And that's exactly what happens if you don't understand what refraction does is it takes the earth and takes it from 3959 miles of radius and changes it to 4618, essentially making the earth much larger, right? Uh, in fact, we could actually figure out how much larger, because if we take uh, 2 pi r, whoops, move this over here. So it'd be 3.146.28 times the radius of uh, 4618 gives us a circumference of 29,000. So 29,000 to 25,000. So what is that, an increase of about a seventh? A sixth, something like that. So they've you know made the size of the Earth twenty nine thousand miles instead, and what that does is it makes it so that you can see further, right? If the Earth was if the Earth was twenty nine thousand miles in circumference, we would be able to see further because it would be flatter. It'd be you know each section would be flatter. So what they did is they made it flatter, and then all of a sudden now it, it makes excuses for being able to see further. 
Um, but again, I don't even see that being the case. Again, I showed a ray diagram the other day. You can't, it doesn't show that you see items higher up when refraction happens. So anyway, that's a 20, from the geometric standpoint, you're talking 3507 feet. And again, Mount Thirst, 1965. So there's no reason at all that we should see the sun set behind that mountain. But if you do the angular size of it, which you can go to like an angular size calculator. I think I've got one here. Angular size calculator. Uh, this one might work. I don't know. It's, it's got to be easy for me. Yeah, this one works. So we want to figure out how big in angle would be Mount Thirst from where we're at. So we're going to go, what do we want to solve for angle? Angles will be input or displayed as we want to know degrees. So the distance we said was 78 miles. The size of that mountain was 1965 feet. Sorry, you have to do it in like units. So we have to go calculate that real quick. So we're doing 78 miles times 5280 to get our feet. So the feet is 411,840. And then the size of Mount Thirst is 1965. And we calculate that and we get 0 0.27 degrees. So that's about half of the sun. So when the sun with a solar filter that they say the sun and moon are 0 0.5 degrees. So we should see that mountain at half of the size of the sun or moon at the horizon if the earth is flat. You shouldn't see it if it's a globe. If it's a globe, it's behind the mountain. You shouldn't see it at all. So that's kind of uh, why I'm going out there to look at that. And that's why it depends on what we, let's say we get out there and there's a marine layer and we can't really see, well, I'm going to have a hard time wanting to leave that spot for the next night because I'm going to want to see it again. But if we see it, well, then that's fantastic. Then we, you know, we can go anywhere you guys want the last, the last couple of days. So we're, I'm going to be down there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, or I'm going to be watching the eclipse. I'm sorry, eclipse. I'm going to be watching the sunset Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday night, but we'll only be staying down there Monday and Tuesday. So um, if you want to go down there, that's where you want to meet is this parking lot here. Uh, the sunset is at 7, shows 7.15 about there. So you want to get there 6 or even, you know, we'll probably be there about then. And then uh, we'll get set up and we'll do some filming from here and then we can do whatever after. And the other thing I want to see people do if they can is from this spot, if somebody wants to meet us here or whatever, but I want somebody to come over here. And there's some great spots up at the top of this hill. Here, let's try and go down here. If we can get to the edge. Yeah, so this here is way up high. This is a uh, 415 feet of elevation. So this one, according to the globe, you will be able to see it. But it'd be nice to get a comparison shot from where we're at, from where this is at. Uh, this is basically, I think if we put in, what did I say, 415? So if we go back here, go to Metabunk, go to 415. So distance in miles, I think it's about 70 from there. Maybe it's 72 or something. Let's just put 70. Distance and height instead of 415. And then we get a refracted hidden 1059, geometric hidden 1353. So both those say we should be able to see at least some of that island from up there. And then also on the other side of this down here, that's it down here. Let me try and go down there. Exit street view. Yeah. Right down here. There's another great spot. If somebody wants to come down here, right at this fence, look at this spot. Beautiful. Uh, that would be awesome. Now this one again is the same thing. You would, should not be able to see any of that island from here. Um, uh, and again, this I think is, it's so smart that you're taking three days too. This should be something that from now on when people go to make observations, especially if you need to travel to do it and you're going to put forth the time and effort and money to, you know, go right. out there and try to get the observation, give yourself a couple of days because the weather doesn't work with your schedule. Right, exactly. And this is a yeah, so smart. pretty nice view from here. Again, if you kind of get right in line with this road. Uh, you're going to be able to see it. Let me draw a line just so you can see. That's a good view from here this way. Oop. Come on, move box and just drop it there. And let's go back down here. So you can see that line kind of works out well. Okay, that's good enough. So you have a nice view there. So we don't need everybody at the same location if possible. And then the rest of the week or Tuesday night, let's say that we see it or we want to go somewhere else for the second view. Um, we're going to just move up the coast and probably go to, if I can find the right spot here, let me find where, uh, is it in here? The second night we were thinking we're going to be at, I'm trying to remember the name of the place, I'll 
know it when I see it. But again, the second night we're going to be looking at uh, Catalina. So this is Catalina here, and I believe it's, oh yeah, right here. So there's a parking lot right here. This will probably be where we're going to be for the night number two. Is it right here? What is the name of this beach? Yeah, Lifeguard Tower. So right here. So we're going to go down here and see on the next night, the 16th, the sun sets behind Catalina. And that's about, um, so here's the parking. You get up here. Catalina is like in the tallest mountain somewhere in here. So that's about 64, 65 miles. Um, again, you're down low. I think what does it show here for the observer's height? From here is, this shows 14 feet, 12 feet, 9 feet, whatever. So again, that's another one that you shouldn't be able to see. We do a meta bunk, and then we're going 62, and we're down to 20 again. And that gives us refracted hidden of 1791. Are you bringing any filters with you? Well, see, the thing that sucks about having your camera converted to an infrared is that's all you get. <laughs> well, can you still put a solar filter on that? Yes, I can do solar filter. Yep. So I'll definitely have that. I have my solar filter. I would like it just somebody who has a P900 also to be just next to me so that because there is some comparison that we can do. Let's say we don't see anything. There's a marine layer. There's clouds, whatever. I still want those two cameras next to each other so I can compare the footage, what you see with the infrared versus what you see with the regular, uh, with the same camera. But a solar filter would make it so you can't see the island, wouldn't it? I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess. It'll make it so the the it's cut out of the sun. I guess if the sun is that bright, you'll never be able to see the island. You'll only see a, a silhouette. A silhouette, okay. Yeah, that's seventy, that you know, seventy one miles away. Hey, and uh, and I heard that uh, McLooney Tunes is actually calling the town officials, telling them not to let you take pictures. <laughs> trying to blow up the whole. He's probably event. calling the police, like telling them I've got a bunch of drugs in the car or something. <laughs> oh boy. It's kind of make reference to the Infowars thing. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we heard that Infowars is being called and told. Don't let Austin debate on your show. It's a trap. That's how uh, <laughs> guess, you know, how pathetic that is. The globe is just so it's so matter of fact that we have to actually call stations and tell them don't let somebody debate with you because it's a trap. Rather than just say let them debate. Who cares? The Earth's a globe. But you got to protect it. You got to really protect <laughs> it. Makes a lot of sense, huh? Hey, um, I want to. I one other thing about the app. Um, the video search is actually becoming super powerful. Like I'm, I find my videos on there. Anytime I'm looking for a video, I just search for it. Before you mentioned the 1965 scientist that said the moon is plasma, full interview. I just added that. It takes me two seconds to add it. So nice. if there's a video that's not in the video search and you think it should be, send it to me. You know, email me. Use the contact on my on my page or info at theflutterspodcast.com. And I can add it to the video search. If you go on the app right now and search 1965 scientist or moon, plasma moon, it'll come right up. So um, uh, that, that's becoming like I can almost find every video on there. But there's a whole bunch though, that I keep finding and keep adding. So anyone that has videos, um, before you ask me if it's on there, just check. There's more likely a chance that it is. But if it's not, if you could send it to me, that'd be awesome. And so I'm still looking at places for day three, which will be the Wednesday, because um, let's see, exit street view. This is a, probably a good spot, but I don't know. This is a much smaller. Whoops, where'd the sun go? I lost my sunset. Up. Oh, sorry, my mouse is not working. There we go. So you'll see that this is actually now setting behind. Uh, this will be 417. There we go. And 17, 17, 17, 17. There. So we're going to see maybe this, and we're going to draw a line from up here. How high is this? This shows 144 feet or 144 feet, and then this is – let me get out here. Oh, yeah, that's way too far, I think. This is uh, – oh, no. I mean, if we're up higher, that's 70 miles there. What is the name of this? China Pine? I don't even know this. So Santa Cruz Island. So it's a little bit weird. You're looking like long-wise onto the island. You're not getting that full spread. Um but that would be an interesting one, too. That's 70 miles. So, again, you're talking impossibility. And I don't even know. This is what? Santa Cruz Island? I bet you there's nothing even very tall on here. Let me go through here. I saw 1,200, 1,200, 1,100. Oh, I did see 13, 1,561. All right, so it's a little taller than I thought. Let me look that up, actually. So we're looking Santa Cruz Island, highest peak, Santa Cruz Island. <clears throat> What? 
But 70 miles, that one? Devil's Peak, 2,429. Where is that at? Hold on. Yeah, I didn't know that. 2,429. Where is that at over here? Close that. Move it, slide back. Go backwards. It's hidden right, right there. No, I don't see it. What did it say the name of it is? That's not it. Uh, Devil's Peak. Devil's Peak. Of course. Oh, of course, right. <laughs> Devil's Peak. Yeah, that's in California. I don't know if it'll actually take me. It's going to go somewhere else. Watch. Oh, no, it does. Oh, it's way over there. Okay. So that's supposedly, yep, 2,000. That's huge. So that's a big one. I mean, maybe that's a, a one that we could look at on, a, what did I say? On Wednesday. So we're kind of going to be working our way up the coast, and it's hard to know where we'll be. We don't want to really give locations out because things could change. So the best thing to do is follow on t.me slash sunset behind or to just check out my youtube channel and i'll post some community posts if we're going somewhere new or changing our plans uh, i know but people have to work there's not a lot of people who have confirmed that they're even going i know crumb will be there i'll be there austin is coming in the 16th i think so he won't be the first night but he might be the second night um so we'll be out there and hopefully you guys come check it out and we're just going to be observing and enjoying the beach and enjoying uh the socal weather so that's ba basically it sunset behind and again nice. if we uh, have a marine layer the good thing is like i said i don't know if they've had any of the santa ana winds it'd be nice if they did but i that would be way too way too much luck on my hands santa ana winds because the santa ana winds definitely blow that marine layer out i don't know how you can tell when they are uh santa ana winds yeah i don't know when see they do come through every once in a while but yeah i don't know where you'd be able to find what the current date of those is supposed to be but they blow off the marine layer as well. Um, I do know um, south of Lake Michigan this week coming up, folks. Um, I know on the 20th, if you go to Michigan City Beach, Indiana, it will be setting, the sun will be setting directly behind Chicago. And oh, you can really? Get a picture of their lighthouses with Chicago lined up right in the middle of it. There'll be a bunch of people standing out there. Happens every year. Let me get that to infamous mirage. That just happens every single year and shows you way too many buildings. Wait, maybe we were looking good. This is what, one day ago? The Max Doppler, you can see a central coast right now seeing the bulk of the rain. And again, uh, there is an atmospheric river element to this storm, but most of that moisture stays to our north. So we're talking about one to three inches for Santa Barbara County and uh, the central coast. So again, uh, we will get rain, but not quite as much as what those areas are seeing. Not sure if you can see it, but we're just seeing a lot of cloud coverage right now. Not a lot of rain yet. Uh, downtown yesterday, temperature made it up to 63 degrees. So we're below average once again and probably a little bit cooler than that today. Today. 60 currently in Santa Ana, it's 58 in Santa Monica, 48 in Lancaster, and 54 degrees right now in Riverside. So while some of us are warmer now, that's not going to be the case for these temperatures this afternoon. Already seeing cooler temperatures for all those inland spots, Big Bear, Lancaster, and Palm Springs. So gusty winds, they are coming over the next few hours. Notice how uh, we start to see all these colors. It's actually a good thing when you have winds on these days. It's kind of weird to what you hope for when you're doing observations. Winds are great. Rain is great. Not on the day you're observing, but the day before is There's fantastic. By this afternoon, that cold front is going to pass through and really drop temperatures as these winds do pick up. So bring the trash cans and patio furniture inside now, uh, just as a forewarning. Tomorrow afternoon, the winds pick right back up. Desert and mountains, of course, you'll see the strongest gusts then as well. As far as the wind advisory, this goes into effect at 11 a.m., lasts through 9 p.m. It's for all of these areas uh, in tan, and that does include the Santa Clarita Valley. So looking at the rest of the afternoon, yes, the rain's not here yet, but as we head into the afternoon, some very heavy rain moves through the area. This will last about three to six hours, and we're expecting anywhere from a half an inch to an inch for Ellie and Ventura County, less in the Inland Empire. As you can see, the shower's not quite as strong once they move into that region. We'll get a break Sunday, and then round two moves through on Sunday afternoon, and this is when we could see some thunderstorm activity, so just be prepared for that. We do have a slight risk of that. Now, gusty winds, again, going to be a big part of the weather storm. 
category in addition to the snow. So if you don't have to travel through the mountains, a good idea to wait until this passes. This winter weather advisory is going to be in effect until tomorrow at 5 p.m. Not a lot of rain, as I mentioned. So the green on here, that's less than a half an inch, and that's what most of us will see from this entire system. Central Coast, Santa Barbara County, though, uh, that is going to be the area where we do see more rainfall. So uh, just prepare for this to all start picking up this afternoon, and then again, a nice break before we get more tomorrow. 58 will be the high today for both Woodland Hills and Van Nuys along the coast today, 63 for Long Beach, 61 in Garden Grove this afternoon, 60 for Diamond Bar, and 63 in San Bernardino. And for the LA Basin, low 60s today and tomorrow, chance of rain today. It'll be heavier Should and be good. showers tomorrow. We dry out and start warming up, though, for the week that's coming up. So look at that. We'll actually see some low 80s once again. For the San Fernando good. Valley today, rain in the forecast, windy. So it looks good. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, when you get the wind first, you get the rain first, that's your that's what you want. So can't complain as of yet. Uh, Ethan says, I live in Orange County. Let me know if you need any help. Awesome. We would love to have you out there. Um, Telegram's the best way to reach me, at Jaronism, t.me slash Jaronism. Uh, okay, and then I know I've got uh, Hugo. He's a guy from, I forgot where he's from exactly. He's uh, Vika's friend. The guy who, uh, you know Vika, right? Who did the anacothera? Yeah. Yes. His, his friend is out doing observations. He actually told me that he saw a crazy distance the other day. He's got pictures and video he's going to show me. He was down in Baja, like in Mexico, looking across the, what do they call it? The Baja Sea? <laughs> what is it called? The Gulf of Baja? Oh, I forget the name. What the hell is the name of that? The Sea of Cortez? No. Is that the Sea of Cortez? No, it was called Baja something. This area. What is this called? The Gulf of California. I thought it's called Baja something. Uh, whatever. I don't know my geography, obviously. Uh, anyway, he was looking across one of these and saw something crazy from a crazy distance. And I told him, all right, bring me all the footage. So he's going to bring the videos for that. Uh, all right. Anything else you need to cover? I'm going to go. I got to get my cameras charged up, get everything ready to go for an early departure. Yeah, tomorrow. it's the Sea of Cortez, the Gulf of California. Okay. Oh, this is just Baja, California is just this area. Okay, I got you. Um, anything you want to cover? Anything you have coming up? Uh, or did you want to show your map? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll show that real quick. Go ahead and do that. I'll bring you up. Let me jump on here. Yeah, you guys. Um, especially if you're in David's app. We started a uh, thingamabob, a new group. Okay, I got you on screen. All right, here you go. The new flat earth map in Fortnite.
<laughs> Liz, the Iron Maiden's garden. <laughs> I was wondering why Liz. Yeah. I was wondering why Liz said at the uh, in the chat. She says the end is the best part. I'm like, why is that? <laughs> I guess I figured that out. Guess I figured that out. Um, all right. Drop the link in the few Telegram group. Gone way to go, Zach. Yeah, no, uh, nice job. Uh, all right. I think we are good. Iru is. We don't know. I haven't seen Iru in a week, so I got to reach out to him. I don't know what happened. Didn't message me back today, so we'll find out where Iru is. To have no fear, he is fine. I'm sure. Um, here on Earth, there you go. Dr. Bass Ackward says, so we basically designed our model to be completely impossible to disprove from here on Earth. There you go. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, pretty insane how they've set this up in such a way. Again, you just need people to not be such blowhards. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. That uh, Who just are so convinced because of their degrees that they're right and they will fabricate evidence. They'll do whatever they can to... Um, make it happen and uh, that's pretty sad because you've never if you've noticed no glober has ever shown a video and said look it i um you know this is what i expect in this experiment but it didn't go that way uh whereas i have seen flat earthers do that it's because globers would never publicize anything like that they're going to purposely because they're dishonest that's the, that's the uh unfortunate truth that uh, they are going to hide anything that doesn't match the globe belief and just show only the things that uh go along go along with it and so that's uh, unfortunate because that's exactly what you don't want from anybody who's talking about science or if you're trying to get to some truth. You don't need people to basically set you up, which is what a lot of us have been the whole time. So, all right. Uh, any final words from you, uh, Mr. Zachary? Uh, no. Going to be uh, Globusters Tech this Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, people are starting to come over more and more. So if you're interested in getting a little nerdy, <laughs> you know, we try to go over a little bit of technical stuff and just a little bit more. We try to dive into some stuff. Um, yeah, come on over and hang out. Okay, Dave, are you still or did you leave? Dave says goodbye to everybody, loves you and all that stuff, and get the app and get one for your friend and tell your sister as well. And Keep uh, sending him emails with just your phone number and tell him you really need to talk to him. Yeah. He loves it. Ask him why the moon isn't there whenever it's a new moon. <laughs> get really upset at that so again the best place to meet us will be on monday night that's tomorrow night at this parking lot right here that is near this coronado's uh i can't remember the name coronado's bay park or something uh coronado's k's coronado k's park uh and you'll see this is a quite a big parking lot here with the what is a state building or something in here uh i don't know if it's always this empty but this is where it's a great viewing spot for us to start out for monday yeah, let's see if there's any good pictures. Yeah, so it's going to be nice. So anyway, that is the plan. This is down in San Diego, just so you know. And uh, that is about it. So I believe, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I had to show for this. Nope. So yeah, reach out to me. Oh, if you're a VIP, thank you to all my VIPs. There's a ton of you, and I was going to thank you by name, and I forgot the other night, but I won't thank you on this show. It wouldn't be very kind of me. But I do appreciate it a lot to all of you. And I'll be doing live streams like... Uh, stories that's what they're called on telegram i think stories and live streams from telegram so you'll get to get a lot of uh views of what we're doing down there so you guys have it all set if you'd like to join them you go to wop whop.com slash jaronism we've got every other friday night um crypto classes we've got every first and third saturday of the month uh just hangouts for truthers and we're going to be adding some sort of singles uh mixer night by next month uh, where you can meet singles. So we can, a uh, lot of fun going on over there at t.me. Oh, no, no, sorry. WAP, W-H-O-P dot com slash Jaronism. Check it out and become a VIP. All right, any final words? Love y'all. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, appreciate it, guys. We will talk to you soon. Be kind to each other. Don't lie to each other and open your mind. There is truth inside. Till next time, this has been Globusters, Jaronism, and the crew. Peace. Peace.